Good morning to everyone. Today we'll discuss on uh, the new uh, called a landmark um, laws, and there are some clauses. They these will be tested to the current judicial platform on days to come. But uh, two important ap uh, areas of approach is that of uh, wholesome change to accommodate the e world within the procedural code. Uh, the process to be adopted by planet courts of various part of India and how the things will go into digital evidence electricity will going to help the investigating agencies in their uh, crime and also uh, definitely uh, in uh, indirectly impact on the law and order and the entire policing system going to come in the days. Now we have uh, three laws, three major acts. Uh, you know, dates back from when the British uh, left us, they have given our uh, three important codes. And now uh, there are no longer a uh, new uh, Sanghita will come. Uh, the code will be taken care of by Sanghita. Now we have three proposed laws, uh, which you can call the proposed new criminal major acts. One is the Bharatiya Sakho Dhiniyam that is Act 47 of the this is going to replace our Indian Evidence Act. And then comes the Ratio Na Sanghita, the Act 45 of 2023. It's going to replace the Indian Penal Code, existing Indian Penal Code, and the Bharatiya Nagorik Shurukha Sanghita 2023 to be going to replace the Criminal Procedure Code. So, in short, we can call the Act 47, Act, sorry, Act 45, 46, and 47 of 2023 or you can also like, telling in, 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 uh, have some abbreviation called bns BNA, uh, bnss and this way and bsa and all this now simply speaking what are the changes which you are going to counter in the days to come do we need to read entirely new areas new things entirely new structure uh, whatever knowledge i have gathered going through the proposed law it's not that everything is new. I should say at least 80-95% are the same thing. Only numbering or the uh, or the serial numbering is uh, only in change. Now, uh, there are some amendments, a lot of amendments going on on, on uh, the IPC, the uh, Criminal Procedure Code, the Indian Evidence Act. Those are uh, all taken care. The, the para y similarities were there. Just to give some of example, because prior coming to our core subject, We'll go into simple overview of uh, what are there. Say, for example, take the uh, BNSS, that is our proposed criminal procedure code. So, uh, in the criminal procedure code, we had we have sorry, we have um, uh, 37 chapters, and the proposed law we have 39 chapters. And this is because the uh, two chapters, say, for example, the old uh, chapter, I mean, the existing chapter. Uh, 7a uh, to be replaced by new chapter 8 and uh, obviously the plea bargaining chapter is going to be taken care of by chapter 23. So we have uh, new uh, chapters been introduced in the uh, proposed NSS that is our new criminal procedure code and all together that's why we have 37 plus 2 that is 39 chapters. There was previously uh, 484 sections and the uh, previously sorry existing and the propo in proposed law, they are going to have 531, and we have uh, two schedules, and those schedules have uh, taken care of. You know that the table is there, and uh, that table actually contains the BNS, uh, the Bharatiya Naya Sangita. The changes are there. Some beautiful uh, changes are actually uh, very important. Say, for example, the uh, cracking the syndicate, the organized crime. These are there. Discuss on this. Now, uh, from the BNS perspective, uh, I don't know when the uh, law to come into effect. Uh, we are hearing from different uh, news sources and other. That the first implementation will be uh, on the uh, UTPs, the uh, Indian territories, and then it will come towards uh, other uh, states. Now, if we want to have this entire thing common, uh, then uh, the basic concept almost almost same but there are some uh, important amendments and for a officer who are participating today i think 
the most important uh, chapter uh, of the proposed law will be through chapter 13. And this chapter 13 contains, uh, starting from section 173 to 196, we're going to have say for example we had we have um, uh, 154 to 173 the most important sections for investigations and other part where uh, 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 FIR has been registered a uh, criminal case is, is set uh, into motion and then uh, the day-to-day -day investigation or a lot of paraphernalia a lot of are there which are all going to be uh, been covered under 150 crucial uh, uh, chapters or provisions uh, we have in existing 154 to 173 and then there are other um, uh, provisions as well in criminal procedural code existing but in bnss this has been replaced by chapter 13 and starting from section 173 to 196 so um, uh, you know uh, there was a uh, the chapter uh, eight wherein uh, how the reciprocal arrangement of, uh, of evidence will be there. And chapter uh, 8, the proposed chapter 8 has taken care of 166A and 166B of the present law. So uh, for uh, for our everyday experience, we are seeing that today the crimes are uh, absolutely have no border. It's a trans-border, beyond the border, crossing the border. And, uh, and that is why uh, the things are this that uh, letter rogatory starting from how to issue the letter, letter of request, uh, what are the arrangement, reciprocal arrangement. Say, for example, you know, you all know that a um, mutual legal assistant treaty existing between India and other countries. If you go and search by MLAT, you're going to have a CBI page, uh, Interpol page, and there are CBI Interpol page, and on the MHN, you're going to get the, uh, uh, the um, uploaded PDF of the existing um, uh, agreements between existing uh, well, nearly 40 uh, countries uh, we have presently. Now, I just first come to this perspective, that is uh, BNSS, and my uh, I think the most important provisions which I should uh, mention to you is that of the uh, first of all, what I believe the the areas I am working for last uh, 15 uh, or 16 years uh, in my 22 years of practice is that of application of electronic evidences, digital evidences, mobile use of mobile phones in investigation is highly encouraged. You know, previously we have previous act by our judgment by Honorable High Court Calcutta uh, in COVID-19, uh, where uh, the process is uh, in um, uh, order to make up entire uh, uh, digital recording by uh, audio video mode. So starting, if we go by this uh, entire thing, then uh, the first, uh, section section two, uh, the first definition it has been given that is what is the audio, video, uh, electronic uh, means. So audio, audio, video, electronic means. Uh, if you take uh, just to give you a simple example in a nutshell, uh, uh, if you uh, go and uh, read section five thirty one of uh, the uh, proposed crim uh, criminal procedure code, that is Bharatiya Nagori Shurokha Sanghita, that is Act. Uh, 46 of 2023, you'll see uh, starting from issuing summon till the delivery of judgment, everything can be through an electro uh, audio video electronic mode. And use of mobile phone is highly encouraged in, in those scenarios. I'll come to this city uh, from, from that, that perspective. If you say, what are the single, what are the single most uh, area area where uh, these uh, three major acts has put their focus into, and that is uh, the application of electronic evidence, digital evidence, and uh, forensic evidences, and the most important thing in part of procedural aspects that is uh, definitely coming in uh, in criminal procedure court presently and the proposed uh, BNSS that uh, wholesome application of how things can be done. Say, for example, admission. It can be on an electronic mode. So, um, uh, so everything now, uh, even the deposition can be through electronic mode. And all are being encouraged and highly encouraged by uh, uh, this act. So the, the changes are there. I think this was required. And um, uh, there may be flaws. There may be people will come uh, uh, to find out flaws and there because there are billion, millions of judgments are there uh, on this 
three major acts. Those judgments, uh, in a nutshell, 70 in 80 90 persons are almost similar. Only the para wise number or serial number has been changed, just as I already told you. And um, from that perspective, I'm going to say that because as a police personnel, you have to take, in, uh, take care of investigation and other issues. The most important provisions, apart from these electronic evidence and digital evidence part, are some of the amendments which you can keep in your mind uh, to uh, to face the challenges in the present uh, coming days scenario. In uh, uh, section 173 of the proposed, where was the PDF? I'm just sharing the PDF to you all. Uh, yes. So uh, if we come to uh, section 173. This is uh, the proposed uh, section 173, uh, the information in cognizable cases, equivalent to 154. And if we come to uh, the uh, see very simple things, uh, we, uh, one can file complaint. Every information relating to uh, the commission of a cognizable offense can be by way of an electronic communication. It can come to this. I just given some of the example uh, for refreshing of your knowledge and all this. Uh, because uh, in two, uh, three years, I was uh, talking with those in years that I, ma I may have another uh, days to uh, uh, come to you to interact with you because it's a huge subject, huge areas. Uh, today, I'll generally uh, deal with some of the important changes and then comes to the, uh, the important and crucial uh, changes in uh, Evidence Act in terms of uh, electronic evidence and other things. And uh, come to the 154 equivalent 170 new proposed law. In there, you see that by electronic communication, even a, a, a information of cognizable offenses can be obtained by way of an electronic communication. It shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it. So uh, somebody can send an email um, uh, to agitate their complaint. Now, see, uh, already we have a portal, cybercrime.gov.in. I'm just telling about, about the cybercrime concept, but zero FIR concept is already inbuilt into this proposed law and zero fr concept is already already come uh, by of the um, honorable apex court judgment and anybody uh, sitting in any place can file, file its complaint especially in this economic and other electronic evidence related or cyber related cases uh, can file but how do they identify the uh, the i sorry identify the complainant because the case has to proceed how um, the complainant might have to uh, be examined under uh, present 161 sub, uh, uh, by your own system statement and uh, for that purpose electronic communication is okay it shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it so there is a mandate of three days uh, signing the thing and then the hard copy will and all this process will be initiated then you come to uh, say uh, for example come to uh, three so you see, uh, uh, without prejudice to the provisions contained in section 175, on receipt of information relating to the commission of any cognizable offense, which is made punishable for three years or more, but less than seven years, the officer in charge of the police station may, with prior permission from the officer, not below the rank of deputy superintendent of police, consider the nature and gravity of the offense. Now come to this thing. Proceed to conduct preliminary inquiry to ascertain whether there exists a prima facie case, and proceed with the investigation when there is a there exists a prima facie case. So, some of the uh, things I go to uh, just uh, give a uh, glimpse of come to 175. So, uh, there is a provisional clause under sub clause one where we find that provided that considering the nature of gravity, so police officers' power to investigate, we have one provisional clause provided that considering the nature and gravity of the offense the superintendent of the police may require that deputy superintendent of police to investigate the case so uh, this was a, uh, inducted into it then comes to uh, subsection 3 uh, any magistrate empowered under the section 210 may after considering the application supported by an affidavit see previously 
when uh, people go to the police station and the police station was not accepting the ps uh, not accepting the complaint uh, in a cognizable case uh, uh, under 156 sub clause 3 then uh, there is a provision you can they can send a letter to uh, the superintendent and then uh, sorry uh, file a complaint under 154 then file a complaint to the superintendent and then come under 156 sub clause 3 for a uh, com complaint being filed before the court and the court uh, the same taking that as a uh, as an fire of the entire case so uh, and, and given a uh, direction but there was ample misuse of this process in order to carve that point and an interesting uh, uh, amendment been made into it see if you come to 175 sub clause 3 any magistrate import under section 201 in a new proposed uh, law may after considering the application supported by an affidavit made under subsection 4 so they have to make it in, on affidavit and after making such inquiry if he thinks necessary and uh, submission made in this regard by the police officer so he has to be uh, satisfied and uh, he, um, and the submission of the police officer has to be there so, and clause uh, the is a conjoint clause, not uh, disjun uh, disjunctive. So we have to take it the both the way. The court has to in make an inquiry into it, proper inquiry, and then uh, hear the submission made in this regard by the police officer, order such an investigation as I have mentioned. So 153, sub 156 sub clause 3 cannot be in the proposed law in a blindfold ways. Anybody can come with a, uh, so we have Larita Kumari versus state of UP. Uh, I think the citation was, uh, Supreme Court cases, Volume One, Page Number One, 2014. Uh, if I'm not been wrong, so uh, uh, in this case, we also come that for a cognizable case, mandatory affair uh, um, uh, registration of affair is there. So that this section, uh, subsection three, is playing an important role. Then come to for, uh, subsection four. Any magistrate empowered under section 210 may, upon receiving a complaint against a public servant. So if a complaint is being of in case of a public servant, then Receiver, then they have to uh, comply with two sub sub clause that is one A and B. Receive a report containing facts and circumstances of the incident from the officer superior to him. And after considering the assertions made by the public servant as to the situation that led to the incident through alleged. So we're going to hear two persons the uh, public servant against whom the complaint has been made and uh, the uh, su uh, his uh, superior. So after taking these two things uh, into consideration, they only can uh, uh, the court pass an order to uh, register an affair against a public servant. So these are some of the changes. Then you come to uh, 167. Uh, you see that uh, uh, come to the provisional clause, provided that A, B, and then come provided further that in uh, this is the procedure for investigation, provided further that in relation to an officer offense of rape, the recording of statement of the victim shall be conducted at the residence of the victim or in the place of her choice. This, this part was already there, but what has been added into it, that such statement may also be recorded through any audio, video, electronic means, including mobile phone. So the use of mobile phone means the mobile phone of an investigating officer will be the single most important device when we, uh, we uh, regularly, uh, I'm doing my prosecution in many cases, when I start uh, the examination in chief of my IOs, different, in different cases of my investigating officer, I uh, have a compulsory point that every time uh, I ask them and I take uh, this thing into uh, the deposition, that every time they are going to any place, they're always uh, for investigation, for raid and other things, they're always carrying the investigation kit and all these things. So within this investigation kit concept, the mobile phone will going to play a very important role that you, which I told you that the use of mobile phone is highly encouraged. Now, these will also create some uh, problems or uh, other issues. Uh, say, for example, uh, I have a, a, the, a, a, a one a single investigating officer carrying a mobile phone. He is also using her perso his personal jobs in his that mobile phone. And after capturing that data and evidence, it's not possible that every time we're going to have, well, for every single case, we're going to uh, hand over that mobile phone to the uh, forensic uh, laboratory and all. This will definitely going to uh, the, create a problem in the days to come. So uh, there are other issues. I'll come to this because in uh, BNS as well, we have uh, this uh, uh, in, in our uh, proposed uh, evidence act, we also have this 
uh, um, 65B statement format where the uh, where the same has been uh, it, it was uh, desired that in the format that the person who is giving a statement or electronic has to give for the admissibility part the statement under section 65B and uh, in that case the uh, uh, he has to mention the hash value. I don't know how this will be implemented in days to come because we don't have that much of infrastructure at least presently and that may be one of the reasons that in in our procedural code uh, proposed procedure there was a, uh, a desire there's a there's a shall uh, uh, provision that uh, in an investigation a uh, forensic expert will be called in in the po and uh, this is a debated issue how uh, whether we have that ample infrastructure to uh, to accommodate all these things. So these these are going to uh, be uh, important issue uh, in the days to come. So you can you can understand the use of mobile phone in the days to come. Then comes to the um, uh, that uh, that uh, section uh, subsection three of one seventy six. So on receipt of every you can come to the uh, upper portion part uh, that is on on receipt of every information. On receipt of every information related to the commission of offense, which is made punishable for seven years or more, offense in charge of the police station shall, from such as may be notified within a period of five years. The state government in this regard caused the forensic expert to visit the crime scene to collect forensic evidence in uh, in the offense and also cause videography of the process on mobile phone or any other electronic device. So this is the most important scientific development uh, taking place in the developed countries in the world which has been accommodated clearly into this proposed law i'm just reading on the uh, 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 thing a second time on receipt of every information relating to the commission of offense which is made punishable for seven years or more so there is a uh, that meant all type of cases it's not desired but seven years or more offenses cases the officer in charge of police station cell from such date as may be notified within a period of five years by the state government in this regard. So five years time has been given for uh, preparations and uh, of the uh, or, or arrangement of the entire infrastructure and, uh, as may be notified within a period of five years by the state government in this regard, cause the forensic expert to visit the crime scene to collect forensic evidence in the offense and also cause videography of the process on mobile phone or any other electronic devices provided uh, that uh, where forensic facility is not available in, res in respect of any such offense, the state government shall, until the facility in respect of that matter is developed or made in the state, notify the utilization of such facility of any other state. So we can take the help of any other state or any other state can help take help of our uh, state of West Bengal. So point here, very simple. In say recently, there are a lot of cases which are very uh, important, very heinous type of crimes being reported, investigation going on every time when the investigating officer, starting from the uh, sub inspector level to the SPs and other uh, DIG and other uh, policymaker uh, uh, persons, everybody we have uh, a very uh, a nightmare, and that nightmare is that if we take say, most of the uh, the the uh, almost forty percent of India is under under the CCTV surveillance. Now, every time it will, it will at least reach up to five or ten years, hundred percent uh, year sticks. So uh, every time a person commits a crime, it has been captured. There's a probability of the same or their movement, that uh, that entry into the PO, their exit from the PO, their commission of crime. You know, uh, recently in Ranaghat, Senko jewelry case, you have I, I, I was conducting my prosecution, and um, uh, right from day one, when I uh, examined the eyewitnesses. I called out of 22 eyewitnesses, six witnesses I called in brief. And uh, all those witnesses were shown the footage in, in open court. And showing the footage, they have amplified things happen. And recently, one uh, uh, trial has been, uh, evidence has been completed 29 these weeks for uh, 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 examination under theta, T13 CRPC of the accused person. In that case, there is one of very famous uh, single jewelry uh, uh, murder and Dakarthi case in Barakpur. So in that case also, I have uh, take, uh, examined three of the eyewitnesses uh, who were present at the time of commission of crime. Because out of four, one has been killed, three was uh, surviving, and three were surviving. And those three persons were uh, examined with the help of right blocker, 
I have conduct, I have uh, run the footages from the device through right blocker uh, in a screen in the open code because I apply the right blocker because the right blocker is going to make, uh, keep the integrity and convert the entire data into re only read only format. Nobody can write into it. So there is a, the, the question of tampering at the time of showing the evidence is minimized. So uh, uh, in, in this perspective, what I'm going to do in that case, in all three eyewitnesses are examined, uh, and at the same time, the video, uh, CCTV footages were run in, in open code. So in, in these type of things, the, the most important uh, things are actually uh, in the, is a paramount point in, in, in many cases, is that if we send those uh, DVR to the Central Forensic Science Laboratory, the, their infrastructure, they're covering the entire uh, one part of India, uh, they are overcrowded and over burden of the job. And they will take one year, if, even two, three, four years. So well, I have seen my experience that they it, it, uh, it took them to uh, submit the report after extraction and analysis of the entire thing. So in this case, uh, if we have, uh, again, say, for example, every time uh, your officers are making a seizure of a mobile phone or a device, which has got a lot of digital or electronic evidences, and uh, those evidences is maybe the most vital and important evidences because if we rely on the uh, judgment by Honorable Supreme Court of India, the Honorable Supreme Court says that uh, IMEI number and other electronic evidences and other things are exclusive property. Until and unless that level of technology is used to tamper the same, uh, it can be taken on a better footing than an eyewitness or any other witness because there is always a chance a witness can be uh, threatened, coerced, or, or he can tell a lie and everything. But the electronic evidence is always an exclusive property. Uh, is, is very tough to tamper. So if we take these type of things, today the acceptability part of the electronic evidence, is, it, it gets manifold. And uh, from that perspective, if we have the secondary evidence, which is corroborating the primary evidence every time, secondary uh, uh, no longer we can call after the Arjun uh, Pandit Rao judgment, anything captured first time in any device cannot be called as a uh, uh, secondary evidence, can be given a status of a primary evidence. So from that perspective, in every every state, if we get our forensic uh, experts in the PO and they extract the uh, things directly there and a has value is created, then in the proposed Indian Evidence Act, the um, uh, we're going to have this uh, under the BSA, under uh, Act uh, 47 of 2023, will uh, definitely it will help us to uh, take care of the other portions as well. So uh, if we, uh, the, the, uh, with the help of uh, the forensic expert, because in that uh, latest uh, evidence act, which is proposed evidence act, uh, in the schedule we have a proposed format of how the uh, 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 statement uh, presently 65B, it is taken care of 63. So how the 63 uh, uh, section uh, or format or certificate will be. And the last part, there is a desirability of has value. So if we have an expert in the PO, we can gain the has value then and there. Then come to section 179. So in 179, we have that provided for that. Uh, so, um, I think, uh, yes, in, uh, in latest uh, 179, uh, it's not there. Maybe uh, there are confusion in it. But I'm just reading you from my book. Uh, that is, in 179, uh, we have proviso clause that provided for that, that if such provision is willing to attend the police station, such person may be permitted to do so. So, uh, uh, there was a carve on the point that if a person provided that no male persons under the age of 15 years or above the age of 60, because this is police officer's power to require attendance of witnesses. Now, uh, we are going to have these uh, things. So then uh, we can come to this, uh, you know, this amendment had already been there, this uh, uh, recording under 161 and the audio video mode, uh, electronic mode, then a recording of uh, 164 six, uh, statement under electronic mode. Uh, all, all these are already there, but new proposed law, we're going to add something more. So uh, we'll come to the section 183. So we have uh, come to this uh, subsection 6, proviso clause, provided that 
such this is actually uh, the replica uh, equivalent of 164 statement means uh, section uh, 183 uh, uh, we're going to take care of uh, our present uh, 164 uh, procedure of recording of statement under 164 CRPC. It will be replaced by 183. So I'm showing you the subsection 6 of the uh, proposed sections 183. And it says that come to this uh, provisional clause, provided that such statement shall, as far as practicable, be recorded by a woman magistrate in her absence by a male magistrate in the presence of a woman. Provided further that in case relating to the offense punishable as imprisonment for 10 years or more or with imprisonment of life, the magistrate shall record the statement of the witness brought before him by the police officer. Provided also that if persons making the statement is temporarily or permanently mentally or physically disabled, this is already there. Provided also that if the person making the statement is temporarily or permanently mentally or physically disabled, the statement made by the person with the assistant of interpreter or special advocate shall be recorded through audio, video, electronic means preferably by mobile. So this is there. You can see these are changes which is uh, recorded through audio, video, electronic means, preferably by a mobile phone. Then come to uh, uh, 185. Uh, this is actually search by police officer. So in 185, we have this uh, search by police officers and come to the provisional clause. A police officer, uh, Proceeding under the subsection one, shall it practical conduct the search in person? Fair enough. Now come to the provisional clause. Provided that search con search conducted under this section shall be recorded through audio, video, electronic means, preferably by mobile phone. Now see here what you are uh, obliged to do, bound to do in case of NDPS Act. Now we have to do in every search and seizure. So this is because there is a shall clause and it can be interpreted as. Uh, one of a um, uh, little bit mandatoryness will be there into it. So, uh, provided that search conducted under this section shall be recorded through audio, video, electronic means, preferably by mobile phone. Whose mobile phone it is? So, it may be of iOS. So, better to have in every invest, uh, every police station have some uh, dedicated or designated mobile phones, which will only be used by the officers when they are uh, in the in the in the, in the uh, field for their investigation because in every time a personal mobile phone of an investigating officer not always there is a chance of tampering there's a chance of change or, or editing or anything there is a chance of uh, liability uh, being fixed up on the investigating agency or policing authority uh, whether any um, 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 uh, tampering was taken place uh, unwittingly uh, or uh, without any knowledge or without any um, accepting to it. So this is always there. So that's why I'm telling you that this, this, we, we uh, the investigating agency, the policing authority, because since all you are present today are the policy maker, so you have to uh, make an SOP or thing that, or uh, devise some plan of how to tackle uh, with this, the most important device of mobile phone in every step of investigation. So this is important. So uh, then comes to, uh, we'll come to the section 187. That is the most important, that is uh, equivalent to 167, present 167, the statutory period concept and other concept are there. So come to 187, I already do procedure and investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours. This is equivalent to our uh, present day 167 CRPC. So 187, you can come to uh, subsection two and you will have, that for a term not ex this is an interesting thing because in after Kulkani's judgment and other things you have this because sometimes these 14 days uh, within this 15 days period the PC has to be exhausted so it, it can start from the day one of the arrest and then completed within 14 uh, uh, date and 15 days he has to be produced before the court and uh, uh, there are uh, uh, instances when uh, the investigation agency become helpless because of uh, the existing clause. And by replacing the existing clause, there are some interesting amendments been made into it in the proposed law. That is 187 sub clause 2. I'm just reading out the thing. The magistrate to whom an accused person is forwarded under this section may, irrespective of whether he has or has no jurisdiction to try the case, after taking into consideration whether such person has not been released on bail or his bail has been cancelled, authorized from time to time 
the detection of the accused in such custody as sorry detention of of the accused in such custody as such magistrate thinks fit for a term not exceeding 15 days in a, in, in, a, in the whole this was previously there now the added thing is that or in parts at any time during the initial 40 days or 60 days out of detention period of 60 days or 90 days so out of if it's a if it's if, if the offense is up to uh the below 10 uh, below 10 years the statutory period is 60 days we have to do it within 40 days and if the statutory period is 90 days we have to do it within uh not ex ex in, uh, 60 days this is an interesting thing so even io thinks that a pc pair a pair of uh, police custody has been made for say seven days previously and then the time it was 14 days and thereafter he thought that new things are coming up and for that reason in the same particular case he is required to be taken in police custody and then examined on those things he can but the uh, the tab is that the restriction is that if the offense is up to 10 years when the uh, below 10 years when the uh, statutory period is uh, 60 days in that case he has to ex exhaust this facility within 40 initial 40 days and if the uh, statutory period is 90 days then the initial 60 days so he can take at a stage 40 days, 14 days or 50 uh, and on 15 day he has to produce or he can take a part of it and the next part it but the thing is that for a statutory period of uh, say uh, 60 days he have to exhaust this within 40 days and for a statutory period of 90 days he has to exhaust it within 60 days so this is an interesting changes uh, which is actually required <coughs> for long and it is there <coughs> now come to the, uh, the language has been uh, uh, um, uh, twisted in a very simplified way uh, that is uh, in assessing the statutory appeal. 90 days where the investigation relates to an offense punishable with death, imprisonment for uh, for life or imprisonment for a term of 10 years or more. Very simple language. Not exceeding 10 years and all these. There's a lot of interpretation of the um, uh, Agarwal judgment, default bail judgment, hundreds of judgment. <coughs> three bank judgment, two bank judgment, controversy after controversy. Now it's set into rest. rest uh, and what is that? For a term of 10 years or more. So if an offense has a maximum punishment of 10 years or more, then the statutory period is 90 days. And uh, if the investigating agency files just it within this, then they can go for a custody trial or they can, uh, uh, they, the, uh, the, investi the accused uh, are not going to enjoy the concept of default bail. So in case of it is 60 days where the investigation is to an offense or uh, any other offense. So uh, for a term of 10 years or more, so below 10 years and less will always have a 60 days statutory period. And in this case also, if you come to uh, para 4, I'll come to this electronic evidence part in a separate way, just to touch you that it can be um, the first, apart from the first production, then it can be easily by a audio video electronic means so no magistrate shall authorize detention uh, of an accused in custody of the police under this section unless the accused is produced before him in person for the first time and subsequently every time till the accused remains in custody of the police but the magistrate may extend further detention in judicial custody on production of accused either in person or through the audio video electronic uh, electronic you can give electronic uh, uh, means so this is one of the thing. Now come to another proviso clause. That is under explanation two, proviso second proviso. Provided for that, that no person shall be detained otherwise than in police station under police custody or in prison under judicial custody or a place declared as a prison by the central government of the state government. So it's now clearly defined. Now come to section 90, 190, sorry, 190. In 190, that is under heading cases to be sent to magistrate when evidence is sufficient. So we can have 173, one, um, uh, uh, 172 and 173 part is there. So uh, just uh, to add, provided, the pro one provisional clause, that is provided that if the accused is not in custody, the police officer shall take security from such person for his appearance before the magistrate and the magistrate to, uh, and the magistrate to whom such report is forwarded shall not refuse to accept the same on ground that the accused is not taken in custody. So this was been uh, there. Now, uh, in case of three, uh, uh, I just telling you this is already already there. 
but uh, it's already been amended and now all amendment has been serially paginated no concept of amendment is there because the british has given us the law we have changed make changes a b different amendments been made and now all serially comes as a new medical no a no b nothing is there so 192 one point i just want to make uh, take your attention into it's very important thing in many cases i have seen that the uh, the investigating officer at the initial period, uh, period they forget to paginate properly you know there are a lot of other issues which is very uh, confidential because the public prosecutor working long for, with you uh, uh, the entire investigating agency policing authority i know there are a lot of hurdles for a uh, 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 investigating officer at the beginning there are documents coming up the severity concept up there if everything is paginated, then there may be some problem they are thinking that but i think better to have a paginations from the beginning uh, day one because if you come to this 192 that you come to that the diary referred to uh, this police diary uh, the diary referred to uh, in subsection one shall be uh, sorry every police officer making an investigation on this chapter shall uh, 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 for by day by day by day enter in proceeding in the uh, in, in your city and uh, the diary referred to in subsection one shall be uh, in a volume shall be a volume so uh, and um, a duly paginated this is the most important thing we sometimes omit to uh, observe this but a lot of uh, uh, doubt and uh, as person been cast uh, cast upon because of absence of proper pagination now come to 193 so report of police officer on completion of investigation so uh, they are giving uh, our 173 presently now 193 can come every investigate uh, investigation under this chapter shall be completed within unnecessary delay the investigation is to now come to two the every investigation subsection two the investigation related to an offense under these are the processes are all uh, to be taken uh, when i'm going to come to uh, the uh, new um, national vita uh, uh, then uh, bna uh, then uh, B bns and uh, um, uh, there are uh, these uh, crime against women and uh, abetment and all these uh, things have been their numericals has been changed and the beautiful thing about the proposed uh, uh, penal code is that uh, similar type of things have been taken in a similar chapter it's not that they are roaming about here and there some point is here some point is there because the amendments were made later on for the last day to, to nearly one and a half, 50 years or more uh, these colonial legacies and other issues so uh, this has been changed so that's why this 65 64 65 and all these and another even including the pox work shall be completed within two months the investigation into these offenses shall be completed within two months from the date on which the information was recorded by the officer in charge of the police station this is an important aspect then comes the three as soon as the investigation is completed the officer in charge of the police station shall forward including through electronic communication see one very interesting point very interesting point just to come here see we are telling that in our indian law we don't have the concept of chain of custody how the device has been collected how they travel from one place to another and ultimately ultimately land up on the table of the judge so these this entire roadmap of the movement of the electronic evidence we uh, by way of a media maybe mobile phone maybe pen drive or anything this has always have a very obscure picture thinking of uh, very um, um, uh, foggy or obscure picture in our uh, procedural law now uh, at least a single a little bit of hope ray of hope is there what is there in uh, you'll get in section subsection 3 of 193 that is if you come to the last part see when uh, as soon as the investigation is completed the io will follow up the investigating officer in charge of the police station shall follow up including the in, sorry, in the, the officer in charge of the police station shall follow up including through electronic communication to a magistrate empowered to take cognizance of the offense on a police report so they can send the hard copy as well as through electronic modes even can take the help of the ott platforms and other things a report in this from the state government by rules provide stating the names of the parties these are all there that has been arrested and all these reports are there come to the sequence of custody in case of electronic device this is fantastic this is fantastic because see subsection 3 subsection 3 sub subsection i when a officer in charge given an entire account what he what his officer he himself did 
in case of uh, investigating the same case they are going to give a chronological discussion of how things happen how uh, uh, details of the accused uh, when he's released everything in the form of charge sheet and other and in that thing uh, he has to men this mention the sequence of custody in case of electronic device this is a very interesting uh, part then comes the uh, we'll come to the subsection 8 so it's been uh, added subject to the provisions contained in subsection 7 the of, uh, police officer investigating the case shall also submit such number of copies of police report along with other document duly indexed to the magistrate for supplying to the accused requiring under section 230 which is now 207 now provided that supply of report and other documents by electronic communication shall be considered as duly served so 207 not required to be supplied by only of hard copies it can be through electronic mode i think this will be better option in the days to come because in many trials i have faced this problem from day one what is happening when our investigating agency after completion of their investigation files just it submit the case diary and uh, make a copy of the documents on which the prosecution relies to be handed over under 207 and 208 to the accused person every time these copies are served from the gro section and this gro section is busy for other jobs they are not busy for the uh, complete trial or anything for the uh, best interest of the uh, investigating agencies they are putting their every uh, hard efforts uh, uh, labor and everything and thereafter what is happening is a, is a catastrophe what is actually happening that the time the gro uh, is, is asking the accused person or his or her lawyer uh, to come and sign on the order sheet that they have received the copy then uh, start their problem then, then, then the problem starts from their point when the trial is been about to become uh, started uh, the delay tactic started and one of the important ingredient of delay tactics is that they will every day comes with the uh, application or a petition that they have not received this document they have not received that document and if you want to verify the same you don't have that that's why every time whatever i am i'm conducting every time i'm requesting the officer to have a defined a form sign on that a form write every documents except the pages of your case diary day to day investigation report you have to give, give everything so from that perspective make a signature of it because nothing is going to happen on supplying copies it will be better for us for a speedy trial because in the later part the defense will going to make a lot of issues because in, in a well merited case the defense counsel will try to deliberately delay the trial to frustrate the trial to frustrate the witness spend um, uh, years after years so that the important eyewitnesses or important witnesses witnesses uh, forget everything uh, they are, their memories uh, uh, human memory is short because the supreme court has admitted this fact in many of judgment so after one or two years the same person will not going to be post same in the same way where when he uh, been examined by io and recorded under 161 or, or deposed uh, or been recorded under 164 by the magistrate so thing is that if we make our uh, uh, details of the thing supplied through electronic mode what are the documentary line then there is no question of denial so this is actually going to help us it may be some uh, cumbersome perspective from the part of the people that okay we have to send all these to make a pdf and then send but i think this is going to have a record of what are what are we supplying and what are you not supplying so investigation in the trial may be concluded uh, conducted so uh, then comes to this uh, another provisional clause under nine uh, and that is uh, provided that further investigation in the trial maybe this is actually uh, uh, important and sensitive issue will going to be in the days to come because under the existing law we have 173 sub clause 8 and if we interpret the same in this way then every case is an open ended case there are instances when investigating officers are investigating the case and many cases but almost every cases there is always a hard disk there is a mobile phone there is a dvr and these are sent to the forensic laboratory and they take years months after months to give the report and that's why the uh, supplementary chassis and other things will go to the point is there now uh, uh, this, this provisional clause is going to have an important role to play provided that further investigation during the trial the trial chal raha hai, during the trial may be conducted with the permission of the court trying that case and the same shall be completed within a period of 90 days trial start ho gaya 
फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेशन चल रहा है मतलब रिपोर्ट वगैरह कुछ आएगा तो फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेशन के बाद सप्लीमेंट्री चार्जशीट देना पड़ेगा इट हैज टू बी इट शैल बी कंप्लीटेड विद इन 90 डेज व्हिच मे बी एक्सटेंडेड विद द परमिशन ऑफ द कोर्ट सो इफ 90 डेज इज नॉट पॉसिबल देन द इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग ऑफिसर थ्रू द पब्लिक प्रोसिक्यूटर प्लेस अ प्रेयर बिफोर द लर्नेड कोर्ट फॉर एक्सटेंशन ऑफ दैट 90 डेज पीरियड सो दैट वी कैन अकोमोडेट द न्यू एविडेंसेस व्हिच आर वेटिंग टू कम अंडर थ्रू द सप्लीमेंट्री Just see, this is a that's why this is a very important thing. Now come to 195. I am just mentioning those things which is important as per the procedural part of an investigating officer or a police officer. And I think these are the most important thing. There are other provisions that may not be directly connected to you. And uh, we'll take other days or classes on when we discuss all these issues. Now come to 195. In 195, we have this uh, proviso clause. that uh, this is a power to summon person so a police officer can uh, this uh, the provided that no male person under the age of 15 years or above the age of 60 years or a woman or a mentally or physically disabled person or a person with an acute illness shall be required to attend provided further that if such person is willing to attend and answer at the police station such person may be permitted to do so agar wo khud aana chahte hai so it can be permitted to come so that's been there then uh, so this way if we start from that uh, old law uh, that is 173 uh, 154 to 173 now we have come uh, we have uh, in the proposed law 173 to 196 this will uh, 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 sum up the entire gamut of uh, investigation uh, how things are going on how the witness has been called how a chain of custody will be maintained how the evidence will be collected how the case diary will be maintained, uh, maintained. um in a pagenated way all these issues has been covered under these things so uh, in that is uh, um, uh, as a uh, if you then there are other small issues uh, if i get time just to come to 208 uh, uh, there's some other issues and may not be directly or uh, indirectly connected but sometimes become important say 208 when offense is committed outside india offense committed outside india by citizen of india whether on the high sea or elsewhere or by a person not being such citizen or any ship or uh, aircraft registered he may deal with this thing so uh, we have this then uh, now uh, we have already uh, the reciprocal arrangement now uh, just to come uh this section uh 20 coming back this uh, issuing 41 a statement this state of bihar judgment So you see, there are some procedural perspective which is important. I will definitely come to a detailed discussions on electronic evidence part, part and part. What is there? So come to the new proposed law section twenty, and if you join me with the downloaded copy in your hand, then things will be easier for you. So comes to uh, director of prosecutions. So director of prosecutions, we have uh, this thing uh, that. uh the the power and the functions are all there power of the functions of the director shall be to monitor cases this is an uh, interesting important development because the honorable supreme court dates back in i think 2018 17 uh, in one of the judgment has desired that there are one or two person convictions and all are acquitted what inference can be drawn from it either the investigating agency has arrested the wrong person and put behind the bar and and an exposing rigors of trial and all this thing or it happened that the prosecution fails so those both are not accepted accountable or desired so monitoring how the monitoring can be done this is there here so uh, in case of say for example seven 
we have the power and function of director of prosecution shall be to monitor cases in which the offenses are punishable for 10 years or more or with life imprisonment or to expedite the proceedings and to give opinion on filing appeals. So these are the things connect directly connected in day to day uh, activities. We all face this problem. Then comes the power of the deputy director of prosecution, uh, scrutinize a police report, monitor the cases in which the offenses are punishable for seven years or more. And the assistant director of prosecution shall uh, be to monitor cases in which the offenses are punishable for less than seven years. So some of the uh, just things are just uh, yes. Then come to our important part of uh, that is presently 41A and uh, in proposed law, it is section 35. So come to chapter five, arrest of person. This is important for perspective of yours, your perspective. And uh, these uh, things are, I'll come to uh, subsection three. So the police officer shall in all cases that the arrest of a person is not required under subsection one, issue a notice directing the person against whom a reasonable complaint has been made or credible information has been re received or a reasonable suspicion exists that he has committed a cognitive offense to appear before him or yeah. accept yeah. other cases. Vibas, can you take a question, Vibas? Uh, you can, I'll, I'll take the question at uh, the last 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay, okay. okay. Then I can complete the entire thing. Actually. Okay, okay. okay. Because I'll come to digital evidence part in the last uh, okay. 30 minutes. Okay. okay, so the thing is this uh, three. The police officers are in all cases. So you see, uh, uh, there are back to back judgment by Honorable Supreme Court recently, wherein that not in every case the arrest is wanted. And uh, how this thing will be handled out and all these things. So we have section subsection three, we appear before him or such other places as may be specified in notice. Where such notice is issued to any person, it shall be the duty of that person to comply with the terms of the notice. Then the actually from three to six or uh, seven is coming uh, this, uh, the, uh, it, it, under section 35, the provision of 41A has been included. So where such notice is so start from three, then come to four, uh, all these things are there. So uh, no arrest shall be made without prior permission of an officer, not below the rank of deputy superintendent of police in case of an offense, which is punishable for imprisonment for of less than three years. And such person is infirm or ab above 60 years of age. So these things you have to keep in your mind on uh, the question of arresting will come. So uh, then comes to uh, section 37. In section 37, the more in, very important part, uh, material is coming there. See, uh, designated police officer. The state governments have established a police control room in every district and the state level. This was there in the uh, in, in this is there in the existing law. Now come to the point B. Designated police officer in every district and in every police station, not below the rank of assistant sub inspector of police, who shall be responsible for maintaining the information about the names and address of the person arrested, nature of the offense which, uh, with which charged, which shall be prominently displayed in any manner, including in digital mode in every police station and at the district headquarters. So this is a digitization concept of the record of arrest and other things. So this is in, uh, important uh, more in every police stations. We have to keep this. So then comes to uh, then come to <coughs> so uh, we can come to the new ch I mean uh, in inducted chapter uh, under section 111 of the proposed law chapter uh, eight. So uh, this is going to play a very important role in the days to come. I'm just telling you because in most of the cases, our evidences are transported and uh, and reciprocal arrangement is required. I, I already discussed about the MLAT and other things. So that 166A and 166B are included within this chapter. The, the interesting thing, the beautiful thing 
of the proposed law is that they have covered all the relevant provisions under a part of that relevant chapters. These will not going to create any confusion in our mind when you read the law. Actually, the, it is not there in, because there are a lot of amendments been made one after another and things are coming in the, this way. Now they have tried to make an organized way because say 80, 90 percent are the same thing. Only the number change. Some uh, 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 desired amendment been made in case of investigation and other thing and the uh, wholesome applications of emote and the uh, electronic evidence and, and forensic experts report and other things. So uh, you see this, uh, this reciprocal arrangement part, I, I, I request you all, please read this because in, in case of uh, electronic evidence or cybercrime or uh, because of digital evidence will be uh, in a huge quantum in every in trial or investigation starting from murder, rape, duck, and everywhere. And there's always a chance of evidences in a, in a transporter cases, because he, in our latest Naya Sanghita, we have a, a beautiful conception of a syndicate or organized crime against organized crime. So uh, that part, in those cases, these people are sitting in Dubai or any part of the world, and they're committing crime. So this, that's why I'm just telling he, this chapter A will going to definitely have a very important role from 111 to 124 uh, in, in our coming days so just to come conclude the uh, ENSS, uh, just you can come to this table so you have this 474 section 474 prior to the table i already told you that we have 531 section now uh, i'll come to two very important provision uh, just to uh, show you first uh, the 474. This is actually uh, given up uh, a landmark concept, I can call, uh, on the question of sentencing or quantum of sentencing. This is very interesting. As per 174, the appropriate government may, without the consent of the person, so commuted. So previously we have the commutations of death sentence into life imprisonment. Now we'll have uh, co commutations for every type of offenses or quantum. What are those things? For a sen death sentence, the, it can be commuted to life imprisonment. For a life imprisonment, it can be uh, for imprisonment for a term not less than seven years. This means court has this scope, or, or the sorry, or the appropriate government has this scope of commuting. Uh, uh, up to 10 years, uh, a sentence of imprisonment for seven years or more for imprisonment for a not less than three years, a sentence of imprisonment for less than seven years for, or for five, and the sentence of rigorous imprisonment for simple imprisonment for any term or to which that person might have been sentenced. Now I'll come to the in, uh, latest, uh, the uh, amended, uh, our uh, uh, Naya Sanghita, but the concept of sentence is read out in, in uh, section four. I'll come to that. You propose law. So this is an uh, interesting phenomenon. Then comes to our most important provision by which I have started today's uh, lecture, and that is 531. Come to 531. You see, this landmark change. This, if we can uh, execute, Indian judiciary, Indian investigation will take up. Uh, uh, huge seat. See what is this? This is five thirty one. Come to five thirty. All trials. Sorry, it was five thirty. Uh, all trials requires and proceedings under this Sanghita, including issuance of service. Issuance, service, and execution of someone and a warrant. So we start the case with the issuing of a uh, summon. Examination of complainant and witnesses. Recording of evidences in inquiries and trial. And all appeal, appellate proceedings, or any other proceedings may be held in electronic mode by use of electronic communication or use of audio, video, electronic means. Now, in the very first instance, that is in uh, section two, 
subsection one, sub subsection small a, the audio video electronic means has been defined. What is that? It says it shall include use of any communication device for the purpose of video conferencing, recording of process of identification, search and seizure of, of uh, or evidence, transmission of electronic communication, and for such other purposes and by such other means as the state government may by rules provide. So audio, video, electronic means has is a, become a superset of all the existing facilities we are enjoying today. And it can be that in near future, something else will going to come. So these actually, if you come to 530, you'll have all trials, inquiries, and proceedings under this Sanghita, including uh, these uh, issuance of orient, uh, issuance of summon, examination, recording evidence, appellate proceedings, all these are uh, to be held in electronic mode by use of electronic communication or use of audio video electronic. This is very interesting phenomena. And, uh, and you know, we have table uh, in, in our existing uh, fast schedule. The same is there in case of uh, our, uh, this, uh, if you want to have a gist of what is laid down in um, uh, present a proposed Indian Penal Code, and that is Naya uh, Sanghita, we'll have a table of this. And, uh, and and that from that only uh, we can uh, go to the, uh, the Naya Sanghita. And in Naya Sanghita, we have that is BSA, BNS. We have uh, we call it this Act of 45 of 2023. We're going to replace the Indian Penal Code. We have 20 chapters and uh, we have 358 sections. Our latest proposed Indian Penal Code. That is Naya Sang uh, Sangeeta, Bharatiya Naya Sangeeta will have 20 chapters, 358 sections. And the interesting, some of the features are there. It's a gender neutral. Why I'm telling this gender neutral? Because if, if you say, for example, go to the section 82. Previously, uh, uh, in a uh, subsisting marriage, a, a male person again marry, it's an offense. Now, a male, female, both, if he's already married and making another ma uh, marriage, then it's become uh, offense. So it's become a little bit gender neutral. So, uh, and also I told you there's a concept of syndicate and organized crime. Fantastic amendment made. Because today, uh, with the world of white collar crime, and this white collar crime, the syndicate, the organized crime, and all these are playing very important role. The organized crime for petty offenses, the organized crime for serious offenses are being included into uh, this proposed Naya Sangeeta under section 111 and 112. Please read this. This is an uh, interesting uh, development, I think, in light of the present day development. And uh, already I mentioned about the, uh, that is in case of, uh, I'll come to this. Now, starting from these uh, uh, various uh, headings under various headings under this Indian proposed Indian Penal Code, if we ca can come to this, we have a uh, just a simple table I can just mention you. Uh, in BNS, we have, uh, I already discussed about 20 chapters. And the chapter number one, that's a preliminary, uh, the preliminary. And uh, within this, we have section one to three. We then have punishment provision, that is from four to 13. We have general exception. Uh, or to the punishment and all these for 14 to 44 and uh, then we have abatement uh, from 45 then now of the actual offenses the segregation of offenses start and you see similar type of offenses has been given in similar chapters and all this then come the ab abatement under uh, 45 to uh, 62 then come the offenses against women and children that is from 63 to 99 offenses uh, uh, against the human body uh, culpable homicide has been defined under section 100. It was previously 299. Now it is 100. And uh, offenses uh, against human body, say murder, attempt of murder, uh, uh, abatement to suicide, and all these are included within uh, 100 to 146. Then come offenses against state, 147 to 158. Then offense relating to army and other, 158 to 168. Offense relating to elections and other, then 169 to 177. 
offense against again coin currency note and etc uh, things are coming 178 to 188 then comes uh, offense against the public tranquility 189 to 197 offense or uh, relating to the public servant against or, uh, that is 198 to 205 contempt of lawful uh, authority of public servant 206 to 226 then we come to the uh, false evidence of, 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 of offense against the public uh, uh, justice 227 to 269 public nuisance 270 to 297 and is equivalent at provisions we're going to get in bnss 152 to 162 offense against religion to 98 to 302 offense against property 303 to uh, 334 offense relating to a document and property marks 335 to 350 criminal intimidations in uh, insult and events defamation 351 to 357 and report and and uh, and uh, and saving repeal and saving 358 uh, definitely it will be repealed when the, when the gadget notification will be made so if we come to the uh, some of the important provisions under the uh, bharatiya naya sanghita that is our uh, proposed things i just want to make a very interesting uh, instances or things to you my uh, my career for the last 12 years i am as a public prosecutor i have been repeatedly been asked uh, to give advice on a very single most important issue that against a political leader against a public servant uh, um, uh, the defamatory post been made and i see uh, uh, the top of the administrations have been always subjected to these type of things it happened a lot of time so it becomes very helpless in in those cases now there are very important uh, um, proposal if this law came in, uh, comes into being so come to those proposal i'll come to i already told you that uh, that is starting from uh, our uh, this this uh, c51 to c57 this is always a huge pressure point you for all officers how to tackle these issues so uh, defamatory defamation because today's defamation is something else so this the concept of defamation has been somehow uh, elaborated to include all these missions and uh, if we come to though it has been made uh, and say this from this part as well it will be easier for you to see he comes to this last part see p56 we have so defamation against the uh, against the president or the vice president or the governor or the state or uh, or administrator of an union territory or a minister in respect of his conduct in the discharge of his public duty his public concerns when a, in his, when instituted upon a complaint made by a public prosecutor so what is happening if say our minister has been defamed in facebook and other or, or any other places present law says that the same minister has to file a complaint because the person who defamed has to be a complainant. Now there is a laxity, there's a relaxation into it. A public prosecutor can initiate a case. So if a defamation against the president or the vice president or the governor or of a state or administration or a minister or anybody in respect of his conduct in the discharge of his public person when instituted upon a complaint made by the public prosecutor. So though there is non-cognizable, but it will be tried by court of session. So it is there. Then 
we have this printing part that I'm telling about Facebook and other things, the publications and other things. In case of printing or engraving matter, knowing it to be defamatory against the president or the vice president or the governor or of a state or minister or union territory or a minister in respect of his conduct in his discharge of his public functions when instituted upon a complaint made by the public prosecutor. In this case also, it is session travel. For individual, it's a magistrate travel. But in case of this, though it's a non uh, uh we have to start in, uh, if I had after taking the permission from the court, but this is uh, travel by session court. So these are some of the uh, important things uh, you can read. Now come to the part of the Bharatiya uh, Sakho Sanghita, that is Indian Evidence Act. So in Indian Evidence Act, we have uh, <coughs> 12th chapter. So, uh, so this is our new evidence so it has a 12th chapter 170 section and four parts very simply speaking it is an act 47 of 2023 you can call this act 47 of 2023 it has four parts. Part one, that is chapter one, it only contains one single chapter. It has two sections, two provisions, sections, section one to section two. Then comes part two. Part two has single chapter two, and it covers section three to section 50. Then comes part three. It covers chapter three, that is 51 to 53. Then chapter four, that is 54 to 55. Chapter 5, 56 to 93. Chapter 6, uh, 94 to 103. And part 4, it contains chapter uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And in chapter 7, 104 to 120, uh, provisions are there. In chapter 8, we have 121 to 123. In chapter 9, we have 124 to uh, 124 uh, to, uh, to 139 in chapter 10, 140 to 168. In chapter 11, we have 169. In chapter 12, we have 170. So, this uh, Indian Evidence Act, if you take the important part of it, and I'm going to just discuss you about uh, uh, with a um, PowerPoint presentation. Most of the amendments uh, are actually connected to the digital evidence. So <laughs> it made the entire thing as virtual as possible. And it includes a lot of things. And uh, I'll take a few minutes of yours to discuss about this PowerPoint. And If you see this, the Bharatiya Sakho Adhinium, that Indian Evidence Act, has amended the provision of what is document. It means any matter expressed or described or otherwise recorded upon any substance. See, already our document concept includes the electronic record and document. What is new in, in, into it? The illustration 6. It says an electronic record or email server logs, documents or computers, laptop or smartphones, messages, website, locational evidence, and voicemail messages stored on a digital devices are all documents. So it expands the all technical paraphernalia, IP data to voicemail, everything. So these illustrations uh, six important in defining the extensive part of what is called the document. So in case of investigation or anything uh, of that, or trial or inquiry in, in, in uh, tribunal or everywhere, we have this uh, new uh, scope of the area of what is document. Then come what is evidence. So evidence includes all statement. So it can be ocular. Somebody is coming to the dock and deposing. 
The interesting point is that previously it was an ocular of direct evidence and the documentary evidence and documentary evidence includes the electronic record and document. We have this now presently. But the proposed thing is it, it is, is much uh, better and, 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 and uh, advanced. It says it's not only documents somebody is coming to and depose depot the dog. He can even depose by way of an electronic document. And that's why the evidence of uh, taking evidence of important witnesses, police officers where time is very precious, they are coming to the court and kept waiting for days long for a, only one single uh, uh, deposition for a particular case. He, he could have done other jobs on that very day. This is to facilitate this, pro, uh, to, to minimize this problem, we can he take help of this thing. What is that? All statements, including statements given electronically, which the court permits are required to be made before it by witnesses in relation to matters of facts under inquiry, and such statements are called oral evidence. All documents, electronic uh, or digital. So oral documents now can be taken electronically. So we now have the loss, this proposed law, when co comes into effect, it will definitely uh, make a, a, a inroads of evidence on VC video conferencing. So uh, already we are having rules on that. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are forwarding it because there are a lot of trouble and hurdle because of lack of internet connections, how the things will be uh, exhibited, how this can be, how the, uh, the screen will be shared, how the actual document, the deposition will be sent to him, then get it signed by and returned to the court. These are all things are there. There are problem of logistic and other things. And these we have to make because after pandemic period, we, we have came to know that contactless world is our destiny. So in this case, virtual world is our destiny. So in that case, even a direct ocular witness be through electronic mode. And in case of a document, it is always uh, uh, the digital records and electronic records are already told. So admission, admission can be through e-form. An admission is a statement, oral or documentary, or content in electronic form, which suggests any inference as to any fact. So it can be uh, admission can be an electronic form. Give a simple example. The law has not already uh, has come, but I already got an example of the same. In one of the case, I am uh, conducting a prosecution in Tufan Ganj. After committing the murder, the uh, husband sent a WhatsApp uh, chat communication to his uh, only son, uh, elder son that <coughs> uh, being frustrated and fed up with the relationship, I have killed your mother. And um, um, this, uh, this is the content of his chat. And the investigating agency has come with this as an extrajudicial confession or the admission of the offense. Now, it is an electronic format. So it can be extrajudicial, it can be judicial, it can be admission in any part. It may, it may be there within the content of it, electronic chat or electronic document. Then entries in the books of accounts, public or official book, etc. <coughs> books it can be in the e form because we are now digitizing and upgrading the pdf and other thing into the internet so to form an opinion e form when a court has to form an opinion so we now are going heading towards present 45 to 45 a to 47 now we already have this information technology act section 79 a uh, examiners of electronic record can give an opinion as to the electronic record of a device and that can go as a relevant evidence under 45A of the existing law. Just keep this in your mind and then read this uh, proposed law. It says section 31, when a court has to form an opinion as to the existence of any fact of a public nature, any statement of it made in a re recital contained in any central act or state act or in a central government or state government notification appearing in the respective official gazette or in a printed paper or in electronic or digital form purporting to be such gadget in an relevant bag. So e-gadget, the content of the e-gadget can be easily downloaded and prepared, placed before the court to take care of this relevant evidence. Then 32, when the court has to form an opinion as to the law of any country, then also the digital or electronic form of that law can be placed before the court and the court has to ac accept the same. Then comes section 33, that is evidence given to statement part or a longer statement. We have a huge statement, but taking part of the statement. It can be part of the electronic statement. Then examiners of electronic evidence, you already had 
when the court has to form an opinion upon a point of foreign law, science, art, or anything, then uh, the uh, question as to the handwriting or finger impressions are relevant facts, and such persons are called experts. Illustration two, agar aap dekhenge, to milenge, where milega, when in a proceeding, in a proceedings, the court has to form an opinion on any matter relating to any information transmitted or stored in any computer uh, resource or any other electronic or digital form, the opinion of examiners of electronic evidence. Presently, presently, the director and the authorized officer of Central Forensics Laboratory and other forensics laboratory can be termed after a notification, obviously, as a person coming under section 39 of the proposed law and 45A of the existing law. So certifying authority's opinion, why required? It is, it is uh, very much important because in the days to come, we don't have this manual signature, we have a digital signature, electronic signature. So if we want to know, have some opinion, whether these the, that same person was put has put this signature, whether this is original or genuine or whatever things, when the court has to form an opinion as to the person by whom any document was written or signed, the opinion of any person acquainted with the handwriting of the person. Now come to two, when the court has to form an opinion as to the electronic signature of any person, then in see for example i know how my father used to sign i can be called to identify it was in previous in present 40, section 47 now it is section 41 the proposed law but in case of digital signature i cannot uh, uh, give an opinion about the digital signature of mr x it is only the certifying authority who can give an opinion and that is when a court has to form an opinion as to the electronic signature of any person, the opinion of certifying authority which has issued the electronic signature certificate is a relevant fact. So these are, uh, it now comes to very important three, four section under Indian Evidence Act, which will going to revolutionize entire system of our investigation, trial, inquiry, and anything and everything. Just let me read out those provisions. Number one, 57. Primary evidence. What is primary evidence? Primary evidence means the document itself produced for the inspection of the court. Now, we already have Arjun Pandit Rao judgment, which says if an electronic record, first time captured in a device, can be given a status of a primary. Fantastic. Then just read this uh, explanation four and thereafter. Explanation four says where an electronic or digital record is created or stored, and such storage occurs simultaneously or sequentially in multiple files each such file is primary evidence you know there is a dichotomy or a paradox you can call uh, the nature of the technology is this when you process the data in a ram it never store anything it allocate a space in the non volatile memory and and make a replica or image of the same and you call it a saving in a file under some name and other thing. So in this file structure things, we need to take care of the, 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 the logistic, the movement of the originated files through different medias. So how are we going to take this? What is the status of those documents? Fantastically explained in explanation four, five, six, and seven. I will request you be prepared at least with these provisions. This is going to make a revolution. Why I'm telling is because we had lot of we already have lot of difficulties in dealing with the electronic evidence because there are question uh, I'm not telling as Indian law it was the existing worldwide concept that electronic document is always susceptible to change and uh, it can be changed at any point of time and again also uh, the documents that are coming is always in a secondary format it's a replica it's a stored device it's an image. All these concepts technologically, if you take uh, uh, perfectly uh, coined words, are always there in this field. So how to tackle all these things? And that is why explanation 4, 5, 6, and 7 will take a very important role to play. And section 57 to section 63 is very important in the days to come. Now explanation 4, where an electronic or digital record is created or stored, and such storage occurs, simultaneously or sequentially in multiple files you are storing those data in a hard disk in multiple files then each such file will be primary evidence expression five where an electronic or digital record is produced from proper custody 
such electronic and digital record is primary evidence unless it is disputed now what is proper custody you will i'll come this point later on we just wait where a video recording is simultaneously stored in electronic form and transmitted where a video recording is simultaneously stored in electronic form and transmitted or broadcast or transferred to another each of the stored recordings is a primary evidence so dvr is a dvr contains the primary evidence when electronic or digital record is stored in multiple storage spaces in a computer resource so i can store the data in my hard disk file in hard disk in my pen drive and, and other places so each uh, multiple st storage spaces in a computer resource each such automated storage definitely automated storage including temporary files is primary evidence now the admissibility of electronic record undeniable if we take the wording of section 61 it says nothing in this odinium that is in code previously code now odinium so nothing in this odinium shall apply to deny the admissibility of an electronic or digital record in the evidence on the ground that it is an electronic or digital record and such record shall subject to section 63 have the same legal effect validity enforceability as other documents so you can take this thing in this way that this section will revolutionize the application of electronic evidence no court say that they will not going to rely on it every electronic or digital evidence because see previously there are hundreds of judgment in usa uk other developed countries even including south africa uh, brazil canada and are there that they are telling that electronic evidence may be susceptible to change and we should not rely on it now things are shifting towards reliability posing more reliability on the electronic evidence but because people have no other option open india is the world's second largest internet user we're heading for a number one first spot now people are whatever they're doing their every footprint is in the digital platform. So we have to take evidence from the digital platform. We can't have any allergy or apathy towards this. We can't, we can afford to do it. So if that been so, then law has to be the, that way, updated or upgraded or advanced. And this is that law. It says no provision in this odinium shall apply to or help to deny the admissibility of electronic or digital record in the evidence on the ground that it is it is an electronic record or electronic thing and such records shall subject to 63 63 subject to why because 63 is equivalent to present day 65b so if we comply 65b electronic evidence will be made admissible same way if we comply to 63 then 61 is a straight jacket rule nobody can deny so if we want to add, take an electronic evidence, rely on it, or digital evidence and rely on it, the only thing that we have to comply is the, uh, the procedure laid down under section 63, that is present day 65B. Now, the content of electronic record may be proved in accordance with, now come to 62. 62 is equivalent to 65A. It says the content of an electronic record may be proved in, in accordance with the provision of 60 just the copy paste now no change 65a equals to 62 and 65b equals to 63 and 63 subsection 1 like the present day 65b subsection 1 is a fantastic uh, provisions given to made us able to come with the copy of the evidence to a media or a print out a documented form it would have not been there we would have been absolutely helpless to admit or exhibit any kind of electronic evidence which is the most important evidence if you go and uh, at least study my own cases what i have done for the last 10 15 years uh, 12 years as a prosecutor uh, in every nature of crime i have tried to include electronic evidence in it because people the judges their mindset is all more prone on the scientific evidence they rely on the survey in my most of the trial you know i have i'm starting my i'm opening my prosecution case with the scientific expert that is the forensic expert 
doctor and other things the uh, uh, footprints the uh, the gait patterns the cycle patterns the bike pattern whatever be the way the evidence is coming up i'm starting with those people because the ju judges mindset is more they are relying on the scientific evidence and that is why if we want to have a successful prosecution because you know because uh, uh, because of the successful prosecution in a heinous crime the law and order will be maintained is all directly connected with each other so for every heinous cases there is a question of accountability of all of the officers present today and when there is a question of accountability people are depending on i on you what you are doing in that perspective we always have a strategy a policy a planning before we start doing a vital or crucial case which is heinous or very important and highly reported in the society in your districts and other so in those cases we have to accept many fold electronic document and this way we can go to the uh, rigors of 65b and uh, uh, it can be in a standalone mode it can be in a computer system or can, you know evidence can be in three format either i say for example i'm sending a mail to you so it's a networking is is going to the tunnel networking tunnel or protocols by way of uh, maintaining the networking protocol so on a computer network it can be a downloaded computer system standalone system or it can be a computer system or uh, as a running condition so standalone mode on a computer system on a computer network on a computer resource enabling information creating or providing information processing and storage they are on the way of processing and storage by using different automated software and other things so this way that uh, electronic evidence can be different perspective and we have as you know already have but the interesting point about this now coming to section 66 except in the case of a secured electronic signature if the electronic signature of any subscriber is alleged to have been affixed to an electronic record the fact that such electronic signature is the electronic signature of the subscriber must be proved we have to prove this and for proving this the opinion of the report of the signature certifying authority is a very uh, it will play a very important crucial role then genuineness of every electronic or digital record section 81 the court shall presume the genuineness of every electronic or digital record purporting to be the official gadget purporting to be the electronic or digital record directed by any law to be kept by any person if such electronic or digital record is kept substantially in the form required by law uh, uh, in, in uh, and is produced from the proper country. I have taken that it because when we are collecting the evidence, the three point important thing is that the important thing is that one is a collection, second is preservation, and third is a presentation before the court of law or the forum. And in this process, the forensic expert is also playing an important role, helping us. Now, in doing so, you see that genuineness of every electronic record uh, that there is a presumption if it is coming from the proper custody means the person who is a custodian of the device which contains the evidence so uh, some of the few sections are just to, uh, we are just make a mention of the same and i'll come to a, any questions you if you have so the court can presume that every electronic record uh, whenever is put into uh, make a valid agreement then uh, how the electronic record and secure electronic records will be imposed in any pro proceedings involving a secure electronic record the court shall presume unless contrary is proved that the secure electronic record has not been altered since the specific point of time to which the secure status relates so there is a presumption of fact in this case in any proceeding involving secure electronic signature the court shall presume unless the contrary is proved that the secure how this is related to the reliability of a data which can be called a secure electronic uh, uh, put uh, on it and secure electronic signature and say for example uh, uh, when a document is been proved by a signature the same way an electronic record can be proved by an electronic signature of the originator so the secure electronic signature is affixed by a subscriber with the intention of signing or approving the electronic record and except in the case of a secure electronic record or secure electronic signature nothing in this, this section shall create any presumption relating to the authenticity and integrity of the electronic record or any electronic signature so we have 50 50 balance been made it's not that you're going to make this sacrosanct, but 
secure return signature it is affixed by subscriber with the intention of signing or approving the electronic signature and this section section 86 has to be read with section uh, 3a of 3 capital a of information technology act when we uh, have the authenticity uh, question of authenticity of a digital signature then comes to 87 the court shall presume unless contrary is proved that the information listed in electronic signature certificate is correct except for information specified of subscriber information which has not been verified if the certificate was accepted by the subscriber so uh, if i uh, accept it there is a very little scope for my, me to recoil and and and, uh, and, and say uh, that uh, it is not my signature section 90 so a presumption in favor of electronic message the court may presume that an electronic message forwarded by an originator through an electronic mail server to the address to whom the message purports to have been sent this is equivalent to present day section 88a 88a has been in a form of section 90 it says we can presume we may presume that this message has sent from this mail id or this terminal of this origin from this origin from this recipient but the court shall not make any presumption as to the person by whom such message was sent say for example i uh, there is an allegation that i have sent some uh, obscene materials to some uh, person and the person files a case investigating agency comes to my house and take the evidence a screenshot a printout and, and then and the attachment and all this how far or how much presumption the court make from this evidence what makes from this evidence simple the court may presume that this uh, communication purported to have been sent from vivas.chatterjee at that of gmail.com to the mail id of that person but court shall not presume that vivas chatterjee has sent this mail so that's the interesting uh, inter uh, concept of law in india because we differentiate between a man and machine when an electronic record purporting or proved to be five years old uh, in case of non-electronic record it's a three, 30 years old presumption but in case of electronic record, you know we have a concept called digital dark age the data which you can read today you may not read the same after 20 25 years and that's why the concept of pdf slash a that's when archived has come 2000 years old manuscript can be read or decoded but uh, uh, evidence in a floppy disk may not be done today in a court when the evidence is to be placed so that's the irony of this ultra modern world where the concept of digital dark age has come and that's why the presumption is 30 years for non-digital documents here is only five years is produced from any custody with the court <coughs> in the particular case you consider proper the court may presume that the electronic signature which purpose to be the electronic signature of any particular person was so affixed by him only or any person whom he has authorized to sign on his behalf <coughs> so if a document say five years a, a, a electronic doc, uh, record is there and it's a five years old then the court may presume that this uh, the signature has been imposed by me or by any person whom i have authorized so production of electronic records no one shall be compelled to produce documents the same thing uh, unless and until the law says so so new uh, uh, th that is a wholesome amendment in in, in indian uh, evidence act and some of them th things in case of virtual uh, e courts and other I already discuss all this point in case of our shuroka uh, sangita we have audio video electronic most definition i already discussed about it we have uh, tip by mentally or physically disabled person by audio video electronic means we have someone to be uh, to be served by electronic communications different platform can be used for that purpose and uh, and uh, these are there and uh, due service of someone through electronic communications or with a proper service we can send it through different platforms and other and then that can be taken as a due service and this can be read with section 13 uh, 11 12 and 13 of information technology Act. Due service then comes to the production of any document, electronic communication, including communications devices, how a document can be produced. Search and seizure by mobile phone. So I already come to this point. The process of conducting search of a place or taking possession of property, article uh, or a thing under this chapter or under section 100, including the preparation of the list of all things seized, occurred in such seizure and signing of the list, shall be recorded through any audio, video, electronic means 
preferably mobile phone and the police officer shall without delay forward such recording to the district magistrate subdivisional magistrate or judicial magistrate of the first class so you have to send a copy of that recording uh, to the along with the evidences to the learned court so uh, and the competent authorities filing fir through electronic communications we have already have 173 i already told you about three days uh, time gap and then coming person giving a making a signature on it so uh, by electronic communication it shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it procedure for investigation I already explained about the presence of forensic expert so these are all uh, examination of witness by police uh, that is uh, you know 160 uh, crpc now is 180 and the police officer may in, uh, reduce into writing any statement made to him in the course of an examination under this means 161 in the days to come i've seen this all this because the victims sitting in beyond india how their statements can be recorded so in in one of the cid case the call center case 2016 we had a record of making uh, a 161 statement through audio video mode uh, of, of an german uh, citizen so uh, and also already in the operation there's a law now comes in that uh, make a separate record of statement of each of such person provided that statement made under this subsection may also be recorded by audio video electronic means so that means the presence of that person is not always mandatory or record when you are recording a statement recording of confession and statement by electronic mode so even confession uh, uh, can be made on electronic mode audio video mode the search can be done by officer in charge of police stations or a officer make an investigation has reasonable ground for believing that anything necessary so police officer proceeding under this section shall practical conduct search provided that search conducted under this section shall be recorded to audio so keep in the mind there's a what shall be so it's not maybe so we have some uh, uh, seriousness into it now production of the accused by audio video mode uh, so uh, accused can be produced by audio video mode i already discussed sequence of custody supply of river already discussed about this cheating or deception by e messages um uh, sorry uh, no this, these are the there offenses outside india cognizance of police report submitted in evidence i already uh discuss it summons and warrant by emote supply of documents i already told you that there's a lot of issues coming under supplying copy you can send it to emote evidence of witnesses by electronic means you can do it uh the court can do it discharge hearing on electronic means so discharge hearing can be done on this way examination of witness by electronic mode Defense witness might be maybe by e means. There'll be times when the no lawyer would be present in court because everybody will be doing it from their own chambers. And even the police officers and other people will be sitting their offices and they will be uh, 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 deposing on behalf of uh, or playing their part. So, presence of an accused in trial by uh, e mode. Examinations of the accused in custody by electronic communications. That means 313 can be done by uh, present day 313, that is 316 can be done by uh, electronic mode Appear, uh, appearance of expert in electronic means so expert can come on uh, vc or other electronic mode it's not always that uh, they should come on the court and always and, and make an wastage of their entire available time evidence in case of proclaimed offender uh, where a trial is related to a person under this section the reposition and examination of witness may as far as practical be recorded by audio video electronic means preferably mobile phone and such recordings shall be kept in such manner as the court may direct so uh, this is their judgment pronunciation be, uh, be made on electronic mode taking photograph or videograph of case property it can be uh, made i already discussed about this 530 it makes everything uh, e world compliant then in case of uh, uh, the forthcoming indian penal code that is naya sanghita we have section 1 subsection 5 the provision of the sanghita shall also apply to any offenses in india beyond the india and beyond india committing offenses targeting computer resources located in india so if case of say for example in our digital world when the crime has been there is a multiple uh, cause of action and people are sitting in any part of the world committing crime through computer and other computer resources in those cases uh, uh, that provision of sangeeta should apply is not that the device is uh, situated in any other place so documents means any matter expressed or described upon substance by means of letters figures and include electronic digital record uh, for this purpose in case of under indian penal code section 7 proposed uh Naya sangeeta 78 equivalent to our stalking 354d equivalent 78 
uh, follows the man, woman, and contacts and attempts to uh, contact such women to foster personal interactions repeatedly despite the clear interactions and monitor the use of a uh, woman. Uh, and usually today in today's world, this talking is been done through the electronic platforms or other things. Offense against nation by e-communications, it can be done by Facebook or any other mode platform by which these things can be spread. Then promoting enmity, it can be through a, a, a e-mode. Uh, imputations uh, prejudicial to the national integrations by it can be the offense can be committed through emote public servant framing and incorrect documents the documents may be in emote omission to produce electronic record it can this can also the omissions of uh, it can be through electronic record whoever being legally bound to produce and where a document or electronic record is to be produced in that case also he is omitting to produce even an electronic record making false uh, <coughs> electronic record or e-document Distribution of e-record to prevent productions as evidence. Sale, etc. of the obscene books, etc. In case of these, 294, uh, ha we have. These are, it can be through uh, online obscene things. Then acts outraging the release. Of okay. yes. 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 So uh, section 299 is there whenever we deliver uh, acts outraging the religious feelings, it can be through emote. Extortion can be made by emote. Uh, it, uh, an illustration is interesting illustration as I have given, uh, which is mentioned in our uh, proposed law. It threatens jet by sending a message to an electronic device that your child is in my possessions and will be put to death unless you send me one lakh rupees. A thus induces jet to give him money. A has committed extortion. So you can understand, give an example of extortion by E mode. Making a false document by E mode. So this, this is their uh, electronic forgery. Uh, today's documents are more or less electronic documents. So forgery has to be electronic. Forgery of uh, record of uh, court, etc., by E mode. Possession of forged E documents. Forged E documents using as genuine <coughs> counterfeiting for authentication of E recording. E records falsification of uh, uh, accounts in e form statement conducting to public mischief by e forms and all these are there uh, officials who are participating today i think the most important uh, chapter uh, of the proposed law will be through chapter 13 and this chapter 30 contains uh, starting from section 173 to 196 we're going to have say for example we had we have um, uh, 154 to 173, the most important sections for investigations and other part where uh, a fire has been registered, a criminal case is set uh, into motion, and then uh, the day-to-day -day investigation, or a lot of paraphernalia, a lot of things are there, which are all going to be uh, been covered under 150. Most crucial uh, uh, chapters or provisions uh, we have in existing 154 to 173 and there are other um, uh, provisions as well in criminal procedure code existing but in bnss this has been replaced by chapter 13 and starting from section 173 to 196 so um, uh, you know uh, there was a uh, the chapter in, uh, 8 wherein uh, how the reciprocal arrangement of of evidence will be there and chapter uh, 8 the proposed chapter 8 has taken care of 166a and 166 b of the present law so uh, for uh, for our everyday experience we are seeing that today the crimes are uh, absolutely have no border it's a trans border beyond the border crossing the border and uh, and that is why uh, the things are this that uh, letter rogatory starting from how to issue the letter, letter of request uh, what are the arrangement, reciprocal arrangement? Say, for example, you know, you all know that a um, mutual legal assistance treaty exists in between India and other countries. If you go and search by MLAT, you're going to have a CBI page, uh, Interpol page, and there is a CBI Interpol page, and under the, the MHN, you're going to get the, uh, uh, the um, uploaded PDF of the existing um, uh, agreements between existing uh, well, nearly 40 uh, countries uh, we have presently. Now, I just first come to this perspective, that is uh, BNSS, 
and my uh, i think the most important provisions which i should uh, mention to you is that of the uh, first of all what i believe the the areas i am working for last uh, 15 uh, or 16 years uh, in my 22 years of practice is that of uh, uh, wholesome application of electronic evidences digital evidences mobile use of mobile phones in investigation is highly encouraged you know previously we have previous act by our judgment by honorable high court calcutta uh, in kavir sikh uh, kavir sikh where uh, the processes uh, in um, uh, order to make up entire uh, uh, digital recording by uh, audio video mode so starting if we go by these uh, entire thing then uh, the first uh, section section 2 uh, the first definition it has been given that is what is the audio video uh, electronic uh, means so audio, audio video electronic means uh, if you take uh, just to give you a simple example in a nutshell uh, uh, if you uh, go and uh, read section 531 of uh, the uh, proposed criminal, uh, criminal procedure code that is Bharatiya Nagori Shurokha Sanghita that is Act uh, 46 of 2023. You'll see uh, starting from issuing summon till the delivery of judgment, everything can be through uh, electro, uh, audio, video, electronic mode. And use of mobile phone is highly encouraged in, in those scenarios. I'll come to this. See the uh, from from that that perspective. If you say what is the single what are the single most uh, area area where uh, these uh, three major acts has put their focus into, and that is uh, the application of electronic evidence, digital evidence, and uh, forensic evidences, and the most important thing in part of procedural aspects that is uh, definitely coming in uh, in criminal procedure court presently and. The proposed uh, BNSS that uh, wholesome application of how things can be done. Say, for example, admission. It can be on an electronic mode. So, um, uh, so everything now, uh, even the deposition can be through electronic mode, and all are being encouraged and highly encouraged by uh, uh, this act. So, the, the changes are there. I think this was required. And um, uh, there may be flaws. There may be people will come uh, uh, to find out flaws and there because there are billion, millions of judgments are there uh, on these three major acts. Those judgments uh, in a nutshell, 70, in 80, 90 persons are almost there. Only the para-wise number, uh, serial number has been changed, as I already told you. And um, from that perspective, I'm going to say that because as a police personnel, you have to take, in, uh, take care of investigation and other issues the most important provisions apart from these electronic evidence and digital evidence part are some of the amendment which you can keep in your mind uh, to uh, to face the challenges in the present uh, coming days scenario in uh, uh, section 173 of the proposed where is the pdf Just sharing the PDF to you all. Yes. So uh, if we come to uh, section 173. This is uh, the proposed uh, section 173, uh, the information in cognizable cases, equivalent to 154. And if we come to uh, the uh, see very simple things, uh, we, uh, one can file complaint. Every information relating to uh, the commission of a cognizable offense can be by way of an electronic communication. If I come to this, I just give some of the example uh, for refreshing of your knowledge and all this. Uh, because uh, in two, uh, three years, I was talking with those in years that I, ma I may have another uh, days to uh, uh, come to you to interact with you because it's a huge subject, huge areas. Uh, today, I'll generally uh, deal with some of the important changes and then comes to the, uh, the important and crucial uh, changes in uh, Evidence Act in terms of 
uh, electronic evidence and other things. And uh, come to the 154 equivalent 170 new proposed law. In there, you see that by electronic communication, even a, a, a information of cognitive offenses in, can be obtained by way of an electronic communication. It shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it. So uh, somebody can send an email um, uh, to agitate their complaint. Now, see, uh, already we have a portal, cybercrime.gov.in. I'm just telling about, about the cybercrime concept, but zero FIR concept is already inbuilt into this proposed law. And zero FIR concept is already, already come uh, by way of the um, Honorable Apex Court judgment. And anybody uh, sitting in any place can file, file its complaint, especially in this economic and other electronic evidence related or cyber related cases uh, can file. But how do they identify the uh, the I, sorry identify the complainant because the case has to proceed. Um, the complainant might have to uh, be examined under uh, present 161 sub, uh, uh, by a 161 statement. And uh, for that purpose, electronic communication is okay. It shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it. So there is a mandate of three days uh, signing the thing, and then the hard copy will and all this process will be. Initiated. Then you come to uh, say, uh, for example, come to uh, three. So you see, uh, uh, without prejudice to the provisions contained in section 175, on receipt of information relating to the commission of any cognizable offense, which is made punishable for three years or more, but less than seven years, the officer in charge of the police station may, with prior permission from the officer, not below the rank of deputy superintendent of police. Consider the nature and gravity of the offense. Now come to this thing. Proceed to conduct preliminary inquiry to ascertain whether there exists a prima facie case, and proceed with the investigation when there is a there exists a prima facie case. So some of the uh, things I go to uh, just uh, give a uh, glimpse of. Come to 175. So uh, there is a proviso clause under sub clause one, where you find that provided that considering the nature of gravity, so police officers power to investigate cognitive we have one proviso clause, provided that considering the nature and gravity of the offense, the superintendent of the police may require that deputy superintendent of police to investigate the case. So uh, this was a, uh, inducted into it. Then comes to uh, subsection 3. Uh, any magistrate empowered under the section 210 may, after considering the application supported by an affidavit. See, previously, when uh, people go to the police station, and the police station was not accepting the uh, PS, not accepting the complaint uh, in a cognizable case uh, uh, under 156 sub clause 3. Then uh, there is a provision you can, they can send a letter to uh, the superintendent and then, uh, sorry, uh, file a complaint under 154, then file a complaint to the superintendent and then come under 156 sub clause 3 for a uh, com complaint being filed before the court and the court uh, the same, taking that as, a, uh, as an FIR of the entire case. So, uh, and, and given a uh, direction. But there is ample misuse of this process in order to carve that point. And an interesting uh, amendment been made into it. See, if you come to 175 sub clause 3, any magistrate empowered under section 201 in the new proposed uh, uh, law may, after considering the application supported by an affidavit made under subsection 4, so they have to make it in, on affidavit. And after making such inquiry, if he thinks necessary and uh, submission made in this regard by the police officer so he has to be uh, satisfied and uh, he um, and the submission of the police officer has to be there so, and clause uh, the is a conjoint clause not uh, disjunct, uh, disjunctive so we have to take it the both the way the court has to in make an inquiry into it proper inquiry and then uh, here the submission made in this regard by the police officer order such an investigation as i have mentioned so 153 Sub clause, 156 sub clause 3 cannot be in the proposed law in a blindfold ways. Anybody can come with a, uh, so we have Larita Kumari versus state of UP. Uh, I think the citation was uh, Supreme Court cases, volume 1, page number 1, 2014, uh, if I have not been wrong. So uh, uh, in this case, we also come that for a cognizable case, mandatory affair, uh, um, uh, registration of affair is there. So that this section, uh, subsection 3, is playing an important role. Then come to subsection 4. Any magistrate empowered under section 210 may, upon receiving a complaint against a public servant. So if a complaint is being of in case of a public servant, 
then receiver then they have to uh, comply with two sub sub clause that is one a and b receive a report containing facts and circumstances of the incident from the officer superior to him and after considering the assertions made by the public servant as to the situation that led to the incident through alleged so we're going to hear two persons the uh, public servant against whom the complaint has been made and uh, the uh, su uh, his uh, superior so after taking these two things uh, into consideration they only can uh, uh, the court pass an order to uh, register an fr against a public servant so these are some of the changes then you come to uh, 167 uh, you see that uh, uh, come to the proviso clause provided that a b and then come provided further that in uh, this is the procedure for investigation provided further that in relation to an officer offense of rape the recording of statement of the victim shall be conducted at the residence of the victim or in the place of her choice this this part was already there but what has been added into it that such statement may also be recorded through any audio video electronic means including mobile phone so the use of mobile phone means the mobile phone of an investigating officer will be the single most important device when we uh, we uh, regularly uh, i'm doing my prosecution in many cases when i start uh, the examination in chief of my ios different in different cases of my investigating officer i uh, have a compulsory point that every time uh, I ask them and I take uh, this thing into uh, the deposition that every time they are going to any place they're always uh, for investigation for raid and other things they're always carrying the investigation kit and all these things so within this investigation kit concept the mobile phone will going to play a very important role that which I told you that the use of mobile phone is highly encouraged now these will also create some uh, problems or uh, other issues uh, say for example uh, I have a, 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 a one a single investigating officer carrying a mobile phone. He is also using her person, his personal jobs in his that mobile phone. And after capturing that data and evidence, it's not possible that every time we're going to have well, for every single case, we're going to uh, hand over that mobile phone to the uh, forensic uh, laboratory and all. This will definitely going to uh, the, create a problem in the days to come. So uh, there are other issues. I'll come to this because in uh, BNSS as well, we have. Uh, this um, uh, in, in our uh, proposed uh, evidence act, we also have this uh, um, uh, 65B statement format, where the uh, where the same has been. Uh, it, it was uh, desired that in the format that the person who is giving a statement or electronic has to give for the admissibility part the statement under section 65B, and uh, in that case. The, uh, 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 he has to mention the has value. I don't know how this will be in implemented in days to come because we don't have that much of infrastructure, at least presently. And that may be one of the reasons that in, in our procedure code, uh, proposed procedure, there was a, uh, a desire, there's a, there's a shall uh, uh, provision that uh, in an investigation, a uh, forensic expert will be called in in the PO. And uh, this is a debated issue: how uh, whether we have that ample infrastructure to uh, to accommodate all these things. So these these are going to be uh, important issue uh, in the days to come. So you can you can understand the use of mobile phone in the days to come. Then comes to the um, uh, that um, that uh, section uh, subsection three of one seventy six. So on receipt of every, you can come to the um, upper portion part. Uh, that is. On, on receipt of every information, on receipt of every information related to the commission of offense, which is made punishable for seven years or more, offense in charge of the police station shall, from such as may be notified within a period of five years. The state government in this regard caused the forensic expert to visit the crime scene to collect forensic evidence in, uh, in the offense and also cause videography of the process on mobile phone or any other electronic device. So this is the most important scientific development uh, taking place in the developed countries in the world, which has been accommodated clearly into this proposed law. I'm just reading a, 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 thing, a second time. On receipt of every information relating to the commission of offense, which is made punishable for seven years or more. So there is a, uh, that all type of cases, it's not desired. But seven years or more offenses cases, 
the officer in charge of police station shall from such date as may be notified within a period of five years by the state government in this regard so five years time has been given for uh, preparations and uh, of the uh, or, or arrangement of the entire infrastructure uh, as may be notified within a period of five years for the state government in this regard cause the forensic expert to visit the crime scene to collect forensic evidence in the offense and also cause videography of the process on mobile phone or any other electronic devices provided uh, that uh, where forensic facility is not available in, res in respect of any such offense the state government shall until the facility in respect of that matter is developed or made in the state notify the utilization of such facility of any other state so we can take the help of any other state or any other state can help take help of our state of west bengal so point here very simple in say recently there are a lot of cases which are very uh, important very heinous type of crimes been reported investigation going on every time when the investigating officer starting from the uh, sub inspector level to the sps and other uh, dig and other uh, policy maker uh, uh, persons everybody we have uh, a very uh, a nightmare and that nightmare is that if we take say, most of the uh, the, the uh, almost 40 percent of india is under under the cctv surveillance now every time it will, it will at least reach up to five or ten years hundred percent uh, year sticks so uh, every time a person commits a crime it has been captured there's a probability of the same or their movement that uh, that entry into the po their exit from the po their commission of crime you know uh, recently in ranagat senko jewelry case you have I, I, I was conducting my prosecution and um, uh, right from day one when i uh, examined the eyewitnesses i called out of 22 eyewitnesses six witnesses i called in brief and uh, all those witnesses were shown the footage in in open court and showing the footage they have ex they have amplified things happen in recently one uh, 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 trial has been uh, evidence has been completed 29 these things for uh, 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 examination under t13 crpc of the accused person in that case there is one of very famous uh, single jewelry uh, uh, murder and dacity case in barakpur so in that case also i have uh, take, uh, examined three of the eyewitnesses uh, who were present at the time of commission of crime because out of four one has been killed three was uh, surviving and three were surviving and those three persons were um, uh, examined with the help of right blocker i have conduct i have uh, run the footages from the device through right blocker uh, in a screen in the open court because i apply the right blocker because the right blocker is going to uh, keep the integrity and convert the entire data into read only read only format nobody can write into it so there is a, the, the question of tampering at the time of showing the evidence is minimized so uh, uh, in in this perspective what i'm going to do in that case in all three eyewitnesses are examined uh, and at the same time the video, uh, cctv footages were run in, in open court so in in these type of things the the most important uh, things are actually uh, in the, is a paramount point in, in in many cases is that if we send those uh, dvr to the central forensic science laboratory the their infrastructure they are covering the entire uh, one part of india uh, they are overcrowded and over burden of the job and they will take one year even two three four years as well i have seen my experience that they it, it, uh, it took them to uh, submit the report after extraction and analysis of this entire thing so in this case uh, if we have uh, again say for example every time uh, your officers are making a seizure of a mobile phone or a device which has got a lot of digital or electronic evidences. And uh, those evidences is maybe the most vital and important evidences because if we rely on the uh, judgment by Honorable Supreme Court of India, the Honorable Supreme Court says that uh, IMEI number and other electronic evidences and other things are exclusive property. Until and unless that level of technology is used to tamper the same, uh, it can be taken on a better footing than an eyewitness or any other witness because there is always a chance a witness can be uh, threatened, worse, or or he can tell a lie and everything. But the electronic evidence is always an exclusive property. Uh, is is very tough to tamper. So if we take these type of things today, the acceptability part of the electronic evidence is it, it gets manifold. And uh, from that perspective, if we have the secondary evidence, which is Converting the primary evidence every time. Secondary, uh, uh, no longer we can call after the 
Arjun Pandit Rao judgment, anything captured first time in any device cannot be called as a uh, uh, secondary evidence, can be given a status of a primary evidence. So from that perspective, in every, every state, if we get our forensic uh, experts in the PO and they extract the uh, things directly there and a hash value is created, then in the proposed Indian Evidence Act, the, um, uh, uh, we're going to have this uh, under the BSA, under uh, Act uh, 47 of 2023, will uh, definitely it will help us to uh, take care of the other portions as well. So uh, if we, uh, the, the, uh, with the help of uh, the forensic expert, because in that uh, latest uh, evidence act, which is proposed evidence act, uh, in the schedule we have a proposed format of how the uh, uh, statement uh, presently 65B, it is taken care of 63. So how the 63 uh, section uh, or format or certificate will be. And the last part, there is a desirability of has value. So if we have an expert in the PO, we can gain the has value then and there. Then come to section 179. So in 179, we have that provided for that. Uh, so um, I think, uh, yes, in, uh, in latest uh, 179, uh, it's not there. Maybe uh, there are confusion in it. But I'm just reading you from my book uh, that is, in 179, uh, we have um, uh, this proviso clause that provided for that, that if such provision is willing to attend the police station, such person may be permitted to do so. So uh, uh, there was a carve on the point that if a person provided that no male persons under the age of 15 years or above the age of 16, because this is police officer's power to require attendance of witnesses. Now uh, we are going to have these uh, things. So then uh, we can come to this, uh, you know, this amendment had already been there, this uh, uh, recording under 161 and the audio video mode, uh, electronic mode, then a recording of uh, 164 uh, statement under electronic mode. Uh, all, all these are already there, but new proposed law, we're going to add something more. So uh, we'll come to this section 183. So we have uh, come to this uh, subsection six proviso clause, provided that such this is actually uh, the replica uh, equivalent of 164 statement means uh, section uh, 183 uh, we're going to take care of uh, our present uh, 164 uh, re procedure of recording of statement under 164 CLPC. It will be replaced by 183. So I'm showing you the subsection six of the uh, uh, proposed sections one. Uh, uh, 70, uh, 183, and it says that come to this uh, proviso clause, provided that such statement shall, as far as practicable, be recorded by a woman magistrate in her absence by a male magistrate in the presence of a woman, provided further that in case relating to the offense punishable as imprisonment for 10 years or more or with imprisonment of life, the magistrate shall record the statement of the witness brought before him by the police officer, provided also that if persons making the statement is temporarily or permanently mentally or physically disabled, this is already there. Provided also that if the person making the statement is temporarily, permanently, mentally, or physically disabled, the statement made by the person with the assistant of interpreter or special educator shall be recorded through audio, video, electronic mode means, preferably by mobile. So this is there. You can see these are changes which is uh, recorded through audio, video, electronic means, preferably by a mobile phone. Then come to uh, uh, 185. Uh, this is actually search by police officer. So in 185, we have this uh, search by police officers and come to the provisional clause. A police officer uh, proceeding under the subsection one, shall it practical conduct the search in person? Fair enough, now come to the provisional clause. Provided that search, con search conducted under this section shall be recorded through audio, video, electronic means, preferably by mobile phone. Now see here, what you are uh, obliged to do, bound to do in case of NDPS Act, now we have to do in every search and season. So this is because there's a shall clause and it can be interpreted as uh, one of a um, uh, little bit mandatoriness will be there into it. So uh, provided that search conducted under this section shall be recorded 
through audio video electronic means preferably by mobile phone whose mobile phone it is so it may be of ios so better to have in every invest uh, every police station have some uh, dedicated or designated mobile phones which will only be used by the officers when they are uh, in the in the in the, in the uh, field for their investigation because in every time a personal mobile phone of an investigating officer not always there is a chance of tampering there is a chance of change or, or editing or anything there is a chance of uh, liability uh, being fixed up on the investigating agency or policing authority uh, whether any um, 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 uh, tampering was taken place uh, unwittingly uh, or uh, without any knowledge or without any um, accepting to it so this is always there so that's why i'm telling you that this, this, we we uh, the investigating agency the policing authority because since all you are present today are the policy maker so you have to uh, make an sop or thing that, or uh, devise some plan of how to tackle uh, with this the most important device of mobile phone in every step of investigation so this is important so uh, then comes to uh, we'll come to the section 187 that is the most important that is uh, equivalent to 167 present 167 the statutory period concept and other concept are there. So come to 187. I already do procedure and investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours. This is equivalent to our uh, present day 167 CRPC. So 187, you can come to uh, subsection 2 and you will have that for a term not. Ex this is an interesting thing because in after Kulkarni's judgment and other things, you have this because sometimes these 14 days. Well, within this 15 days period, the PC has to be exhausted. So it, it can start from the day one of the arrest and then completed within 14 uh, days and 15 days, he has to be produced before the court. And uh, uh, there are uh, uh, instances when uh, the investigation agency become helpless because of uh, the existing clause. And by replacing the existing clause, there are some interesting amendment been made into it in the proposed law. That is 187 sub clause 2. I'm just reading out the thing. The magistrate to whom an accused person is forwarded under this section may, irrespective of whether he has or has no jurisdiction to try the case, after taking into consideration whether such person has not been released on bail or his bail has been cancelled, authorize from time to time the detection of the accused in such custody as so detention of, of the accused in such custody as such magistrate thinks fit for a term not exceeding 15 days in, a, in, in, a, in the whole. This was previously there. Now the added thing is that or in parts at any time during the initial 40 days or 60 days out of detention period of 60 days or 90 days. So out of the, if it's a if it's if, if the offense is up to uh, the below 10, uh, below 10 years. The statutory period is 60 days we have to do it within 40 days and if the statutory period is 90 days we have to do it within uh, not ex ex in, uh, 60 days this is an interesting thing so even io thinks that a pc pair a pair of uh, police custody has been made for say seven days previously and then the time it was 14 days and thereafter he thought that new things are coming up and for that reason in the same particular case he is required to be taken in police custody and then examined on those things he can but the, uh, the tab is that, the restriction is that, if the offense is up to 10 years, when the, uh, below 10 years, when the uh, statutory period is uh, 60 days, in that case, he has to ex exhaust this facility within 40, initial 40 days. And if the uh, statutory period is 90 days, then the initial 60 days. So he can take at a stage 40 day, 14 days, or 50, uh, and on 15 day, he has to produce, or he can take a part of it, and the next part it, but the thing is that for a statutory period of, uh, say, uh, 60 days, he have to exhaust this within 40 days. And for a statutory period of 90 days, he has to exhaust it within 60 days. So this is an interesting changes, uh, which is actually required uh, for long. And it is there. <clears throat> now come to the uh, language has been uh, uh, um, uh, twisted in a very simplified way. Uh, that is uh, in assessing the statutory period. 90 days where the investigation relates to an offense punishable with death, imprisonment for uh, for life, or imprisonment for a term of 10 years or more. Very simple language. 
not exceeding 10 years and all these there's a lot of interference there uh, agarwal judgment default bail judgment hundreds of judgment <coughs> three bank judgment two bank judgment controversy after controversy now it's set into rest rest uh, and what is that for a term of 10 years or more so if an offense has a maximum punishment of 10 years or more then the statutory period is 90 days and uh, if the investigating agency files just it within this then they can go for a custody trial or they can uh, uh, they, the uh, the investig the accused uh, uh, not going to enjoy the concept of default bail so in case of it is 60 days where the investigation is to an offense or uh, any other offense so uh, for a term of 10 years or more so below 10 years and less will always have a 60 days statutory period and in this case also if you come to uh, para 4 i'll come to this electronic evidence part in a separate way just to touch you that it can be um, the first apart from the first production then it can be easily by a audio video electronic means so no magistrate shall authorize detention uh, of an accused in custody of the police under this section unless the accused is produced before him in person for the first time and subsequently every time till the accused remains in custody of the police but the magistrate may extend further detention in judicial custody on production of accused either in person or through the audio video electronic uh, electronic you can give electronic uh, uh, means so this is one of the thing now come to another proviso clause that is under exploration two proviso second proviso provided for that that no person shall be detained otherwise than in police station under police custody or in prison under judicial custody on a place declared as a prison by the central government of the state government so it's now clearly defined now come to section 90 190 sorry 190 in 190 that is under heading cases to be sent to magistrate when evidence is sufficient so we can have 173 one um, uh, 172 and 173 part is there so uh, just uh, to add provided the one proviso clause that is provided that if the accused is not in custody the police officer shall take security from such person for his appearance before the magistrate and the magistrate to, uh, and the magistrate to whom such report is forwarded shall not refuse to accept the same on ground that the accused is not taken in custody so this was been uh, there now uh, in case of three, and uh, I, I just telling you this is already, already there, but uh, it's already been amended, and now all amendment has been serially paginated. No concept of amendment is there because the British has given us the law. We have changed, make changes, A, B, different amendments been made, and now all serially comes as a new medical. No A, no B, nothing is there. So 192, one point I just want to make, uh, take your attention into it. Very important thing. In many cases, I have seen that the uh, the investigating officer at the initial period uh, period they forget to paginate properly you know there are a lot of other issues which is very uh, confidential because the uh, public prosecutor working long for, with you uh, uh, the entire investigating agency policing authority i know there are a lot of hurdles for a uh, 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 investigating officer at the beginning there are documents coming up the seriality concept up there if everything is paginated, then there may be some problem they are thinking that but i think better to have a paginations from the beginning uh, day one because if you come to this 192 that you come to that the diary referred to when this police diary uh the diary referred to uh in subsection one shall be uh sorry every police officer making an investigation on this chapter shall uh, 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 from uh, day by day by day enter in proceeding is the uh, in, in your city and uh, the diary referred to in subsection one shall be uh, in a volume shall be a volume so, uh, and um, it duly paginated this is the most important thing we sometimes omit to uh, observe this but a lot of um, uh, doubt and uh, as person been cast uh, cast upon because of absence of proper pagination now come to 193 so report of police officer on completion of investigation so uh, they are giving uh, our 173 presently now 93 can come every investigate uh, investigation under this chapter shall be completed within unnecessary delay the investigation is it will now come to two the every investigation subsection two the investigation related to an offense under these are the processes are all uh, to be taken uh when i'm going to come to uh, the uh, new um national vita uh, 
uh, then uh, BNA, uh, then uh, B BNS, and uh, um, uh, there are uh, these uh, crime against women and uh, abetment and all these uh, things have been their numericals has been changed. And the beautiful thing about the proposed uh, uh, penal code is that uh, similar type of things have been taken in a similar chapter. It's not that they are roaming about here and there. Some point is here, some point is there, because the amendments were made later on for the last day to, to nearly one and a 50 years or more, uh, these colonial legacies and other issues. So uh, this has been changed. So that's why this 65, 64, 65, and all these, and another, even including the Poxwack, shall be completed within two months. The investigation of these offenses shall be completed within two months from the date on which the information was recorded by the officer in charge of the police station. This is an important aspect. Then comes the fee. As soon as the investigation is completed, the officer in charge of the police station shall forward, including through electronic communication. See, one very interesting point, very interesting point, just to come here. See, we are telling that in our Indian law, we don't have the concept of chain of custody. How the device has been collected, how they travel from one place to another, and ultimately, ultimately land up on the table of the judge. So this, this entire roadmap of the movement of the electronic evidence we, uh, by way of a media, maybe mobile phone, maybe pen drive or anything, this has always had a very obscure picture, taking a uh, very um, um, uh, foggy or obscure picture in our uh, procedural law. Now, uh, at least a single, a little bit of hope, ray of hope is there. What is there, in, uh, you'll get in section subsection 3 of 193, that is, if you come to the last part, see, when, uh, as soon as the investigation is completed, the IO will forward, the investigating officer in charge of the police station shall forward, including the, in, sorry, in the, the officer in charge of the police station shall forward, including through electronic communication to a magistrate empowered to take cognizance of the offense on a police report. So they can send the hard copy as well as through electronic modes, even can take the help of the OTT platforms and other things. A report in this from the state government by rules provide stating the names of the parties. These are all there. That has been arrested and all these reports are there. Come to the sequence of custody in case of electronic device. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Because see, subsection 3, subsection 3, sub subsection I, when a officer in charge given an entire account what he, what his officer or he himself did, in case of uh, investigating the same case, they are going to give a chronological discussion of how things happen, how uh, uh, details of the accused, uh, when he's released, everything in the form of charge sheet and other. And in that thing, uh, he has to main this, mention the sequence of custody in case of electronic device. This is a very interesting uh, part. Then comes the, uh, we'll come to the subsection 8. So it's been uh, added, subject to the provisions contained in subsection 7, the of, uh, police officer investigating the case shall also submit such number of copies of police report along with other documents duly indexed to the magistrate for supplying to the accused requiring under section 230, which is now 207. Now, provided that supply of report and other documents by electronic communication shall be considered as duly served. So 207, not required to be supplied buy only of hard copies. It can be through electronic mode. I think this will be better option in the days to come because in many trials, I have faced this problem from day one. What is happening? When a investigating agency, after completion of their investigation, files charge sheet, submit the case diary, and uh, make a copy of the documents on which the prosecution relies to be handed over under 207 and 208 to the accused person. Every time, these copies are served from the GRO section. And this GRO section is busy for other jobs. They are not busy for the uh, complete trial or anything for the uh, best interest of the uh, investigating agencies. They are putting their every uh, hard efforts, uh, uh, labor and everything. And thereafter, what is happening is a, a catastrophe. What is actually happening? that the time the GRO uh, is, is asking the accused person or his or her lawyer uh, to come and sign on the order sheet that they have received the copy. Then uh, start their problem. Then, then, then the problem starts from their point. When the trial has been about to become uh, started, uh, the delay tactic started. 
and one of the important ingredient of delay tactics is that they will every day comes with the uh, application or a petition that they have not received this document they have not received that document and if you want to verify the same you don't have that that's why every time whatever i am i'm conducting every time i'm requesting the officer to have a defined a form sign on that a form write every documents except the pages of your case diary day to day investigation report you have to give, give everything so from that perspective make a signature of it because nothing is going to happen on supplying copies it will be better for us for a speedy trial because in the later part the defense will going to make a lot of issues because in in a well merited case the defense counsel will try to deliberately delay the trial to frustrate the trial to frustrate the witness spend um, uh, years after years so that the important eyewitnesses or important witnesses witnesses uh, forget everything uh, their their memories uh, uh, human memory is short because the supreme court has admitted this fact in many a judgment so after one or two years the same person will not going to be post same in the same way where when he uh, been examined by io and recorded under 161 or, or deposed uh, or been recorded under 164 by the magistrate so thing is that if we make a uh, uh, details of the thing supplied through electronic mode what are the documentary line then there is no question of denial so this is actually going to help us it may be some uh, cumbersome perspective from the part of the people that okay we have to send all these to make a pdf and then send but i think this is going to have a record but what are what are we supplying and what are you not supplying? So investigation in the trial may be concluded, uh, conducted. So uh, then comes to this uh, another proviso clause under nine, uh, and that is uh, provided that further investigation in the trial may be. This is actually a uh, uh, important and sensitive issue is going to be in the days to come because under the existing law we have one seventy three sub clause eight. And if we interpret the same in this way, then every case is an open-ended case. There are instances when investigating officers are investigating the case, and many cases, but almost every case, there is always a hard disk, there's a mobile phone, there is a DVR, and these are sent to the forensic laboratory, and they take years, months after months to give the report, and that's why the uh, supplementary chassis and other things will go to the uh, point is there. Now, uh, uh, th this provisional clause is going to have an important role to play, provided that further investigation during the trial the trial chal raha, during the trial may be conducted with the permission of the court trying that case and the same shall be completed within a period of 90 days trial start ho gaya. further investigation chal raha Matlab, report kuch ra, to further investigation ke baas, supplementary chassis dena it has to be it shall be completed within uh, 90 days which may be extended with the permission of the court so if 90 days is not possible, then the investigating officer through the public prosecutor place a prayer before the learned court for extension of that 90 days period so that uh, uh, we can accommodate the new evidences which is waiting to come under um, uh, uh, through the supplementary chassis. This is a that's why this is a very important thing. Now come to 195. I'm just mentioning those things which is important as per the procedural part of an investigating officer or a police officer and i think these are the most important thing there are other provisions that may not be directly connected to you and uh, we'll take other days or classes on when we to discuss all these issues now come to 195 in 195 we have this uh, provisional clause that uh, this is a power to summon person so a police officer can uh, this uh, the provided that no male person under the age of 15 years or above the age of 60 years or a woman or a mentally or physically disabled person or a person with an acute illness shall be required to attend provided further that if such person is willing to attend an answer at the police station such person may be permitted to do so so it can be permitted to come so that's been there then uh so this way if we start from that uh, old law uh, that is 173 uh, 154 to 173 now we have come uh, we have uh, in the proposed law 173 to 196 this will uh, 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 sum up the entire gamut of uh, investigation uh, how things are going on how the witness has been called how a chain of custody will be maintained how the evidence will be corrected how the case diaries will be maintained uh, maintained um, in a paginated way all these issues has been covered under these things so uh, in, that is uh, um, uh, as a 
uh, if you then there are other small issues uh, if i get time just to come to 208 uh, uh, there's some other issues and may not be directly or uh, indirectly connected but sometimes become important say 208 when offense is committed outside india offense committed outside india by a citizen of india whether on the high sea or elsewhere or by a person not being such citizen or any ship or uh, aircraft recently he may deal with this thing so uh, we have this then uh, now uh, we have already uh, the reciprocal arrangement now uh, just to come uh, this section uh, 20 coming back this uh, issuing 41 a statement this state of behavior judgment So you see, there are some procedural perspective which is important. I will definitely come to a detailed discussions on electronic evidence parlance or part, what is there. So come to the new proposed law section 20. And if you join me with the downloaded copy in your hand, then things will be easier for you. So comes to uh, director prosecutions. So director prosecutions, we have uh, this thing uh, that uh the the power and the functions are all there power of the functions of the director shall be to monitor cases this is an uh, interesting important development because the honorable supreme court dates back in i think 2018 17 uh, in one of the judgment has desired that there are one or two person convictions and all are acquitted what inference can be drawn from it either the investigating agency has arrested the wrong person and put behind the bar and and, and exposing rigors of trial and all this thing. or it happened that the prosecution fails so those both are not accepted accountable or desired so monitoring how the monitoring can be done this is there here so uh, in case of say for example seven we have the power and function of director of prosecution shall be to monitor cases in which the offenses are punishable for 10 years or more with life imprisonment or to expedite the proceedings and to give opinion on filing appeals so these are the things connect directly connected in day-to-day -day, uh, activities we all face this problem then comes the power of the deputy director of prosecution uh scrutinize a police report monitor the cases you know the offenses are punishable for seven years or more and the assistant director of prosecution shall uh, be to monitor cases in the offenses are punishable for less than seven years so some of the uh, just things are just uh, yes. Then come to our important part of uh, that is presently 41A and uh, in proposed law, it is section 35. So come to chapter five, arrest of person. This is important for perspective of yours, your perspective. And uh, these uh, things are, I'll come to uh, subsection three. So the police officer shall, in all cases, that the arrest of a person is not required under subsection one, issue a notice directing the person against whom a reasonable complaint has been made, or credible information has been re received, or a reasonable suspicion exists that he has committed a cognizable offense to appear before him, or at other place. Vivas, can you take a question, Vivas? uh you can I, i'll i'll take the question at uh the last uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes okay okay, okay. then i can complete the entire thing actually. okay okay, okay. Hmm. because i'll come to digital evidence part in the last uh, okay. 30 minutes okay. okay so the thing is this uh three the police officers are in all cases so you see uh uh there are back-to-back -back judgment by honorable supreme court recently where in that not in every cases the arrest is wanted and uh how this thing will be handled out and all these things. So we have section subsection three, 
we appear before him or such other places as may be specified in notice. But such notice is issued to any person. It shall be the duty of that person to comply with the terms of the notice. Then the actually from three to six or uh, seven is coming. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, it, uh, under section 35, the provision of 41A has been included. So where such notice is so start from three, then come to four, uh, all these things are there. So uh, no arrest shall be made without prior permission of an officer, not below the rank of deputy superintendent of police in case of an offense, which is punishable for imprisonment for of less than three years, and such person is infirm or ab above 60 years of age. So these things you have to keep in your mind on uh, the question of arresting will come. So uh, then comes to uh, section 37. In section 37, the more in, very important part, uh, material is coming there. See, uh, designated police officer. The state governments have established a police control room in every district and the state level. This was there in the uh, in, in this is there in the existing law. Now come to the point B. Designated police officer in every district and in every police station, not below the rank of assistant sub inspector of police, who shall be responsible for maintaining the information about the names and address of the person arrested. Nature of the offense which uh, with which charge, which shall be prominently displayed in any manner, including in digital mode, in every police station and at the district headquarters. So this is a digitization concept of the record of arrest and other things. So this is in, uh, important. Uh, more in every police stations, we have to keep this. So then comes to uh, then come to. <coughs> So uh, we can come to the new, ch I mean, uh, in inducted chapter uh, under section 111 of the proposed law, chapter uh, 8. So uh, this is going to play a very important role in the days to come. I'm just telling you because in most of the cases, our evidences are transported and uh, and reciprocal arrangement is required. I, I already discussed about the MLAT and other things. So that 166A and 166B are included within this chapter. The, the interesting thing, the beautiful thing of the proposed law is that they have covered all the relevant provisions under a part of that relevant chapters. These will not going to create any confusion in our mind when you read the law. Actually, the, it is not there in, because there are a lot of amendments been made one after another and things are coming in the, this way. Now they have tried to make an organized way because say 80, 90% are, are the same thing, only the number change. Some uh, 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 desired amendment been made in case of investigation and other things and the uh, wholesale applications of emote and the uh, electronic evidence and, and, and forensic experts report and other things. So uh, you see this, uh, this reciprocal arrangement part, I, I, I request you all, please read this because in, in case of uh, electronic evidence or cyber crime or uh, because of digital evidence will be uh, in a huge quantum in every in trial or investigation, starting from murder, rape, death, and everywhere. And there's always a chance of evidences in a, in a transporter cases, because he, in our latest Naya Sanghita, we have a, a beautiful conception of a syndicate or organized crime against organized crime. So uh, that part, in those cases, these people are sitting in Dubai or any part of the world, and they're committing crime. So this, that's why I'm just telling he, this chapter eight will going to definitely have a very important role from 111 to 124 uh, in, in our, coming days. So just to come conclude the uh, ENSS, uh, just you can come to this table. So you have this 474, section 474 prior to the table. I already told you that we have 531 sections. Now uh, I'll come to two very important provision uh, just to uh, show you. First, uh, the 474. 
this is actually uh, giving up uh, a, a landmark concept i can call uh, on the question of sentencing or quantum of sentencing this is very interesting as per 174 the appropriate government may without the consent of the person so commuted so previously we have the commutations of death sentence into life imprisonment now we'll have uh, co commutations for every type of offenses or quantum what are those things for a sen death sentence that it can be commuted to life imprisonment for a life imprisonment it can be uh, for imprisonment for a term not less than seven years this means court has this scope or, or the sorry or the appropriate government has this scope of commuting uh, uh, up to 10 years uh, a sentence of imprisonment for seven years or more for imprisonment for a not less than three years a sentence of imprisonment for less than seven years for or for five and the sentence of rigorous imprisonment for simple imprisonment for any term or to which that person might have been sentenced now i'll come to the in uh, latest the uh, amended uh, our uh, uh, Gita, but the concept of sentence is read out in, in uh, section 4 i'll come to that you propose law so this is an uh, interesting phenomenon then comes to our most important provision by which i have started today's uh, lecture and that is 531 come to 531 you see this landmark change this if we can uh, execute Indian judiciary, Indian investigation will take up uh, a huge seat. See, what is this? This is 531. Come to 530. All trials, sorry, it was 530. Uh, all trials requires and proceedings under this Sanghita including issuance of service issuance service and execution of someone and a warrant so we start the case with the issuing of a, uh, someone examination of complainant and witnesses recording of evidences in inquiries and trial and all appeal appellate proceedings or any other proceedings may be held in electronic mode by use of electronic communication or use of audio video electronic means now in the very first instance that is in uh, section 2 subsection 1 top subsection small a the audio video electronic means has been defined what is that it says it shall include use of any communication device for the purpose of video conferencing recording of process of identification search and seizure of, of uh, or evidence transmission of electronic communication and for such other purposes and by such other means as the state government may by rules provide so audio video electronic means has is a become a superset of all the existing facilities we are enjoying today and it can be that in near future something else will going to come so these actually if you come to 530 you'll have all trials inquiries and proceedings under this sanghita including uh, this uh, uh, issuance of warrant uh, issuance of someone examination recording evidence appellate proceedings all these are uh, to be held in electronic mode by use of electronic communication or use of audio video electronic means. this is very interesting phenomena and uh, and you know we have table uh, in in our existing uh, fast schedule the same is there in case of uh, our uh, this uh, if you want to have a gist of what is laid down in um, uh, present a proposed indian penal code and that is uh, sanghita will have a table of this and uh, and, and that from that only uh, we can uh, go to the, uh, the Naya Sanghita. And in Naya Sanghita, we have, that is BSA, BNS, we have, uh, we call it this Act of 45 of 2023. We're going to replace the Indian Penal Code. We have 20 chapters and uh, we have 358 sections. Our latest proposed 
Indian Penal Court, that is Naya Sang uh, Sangeeta, Bharatiya Naya Sangeeta, will have 20 chapters, 358 sections. And the interesting, some of the features are there. It's a gender neutral. Why I'm telling this gender neutral? Because if, if you say, for example, go to the section 82, previously, uh, uh, in a uh, subsisting marriage, a, a male person again marry, it's an offense. Now, a male, female, both, if he's already married and making another ma 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 marriage, then it's become uh, offense. So it's become a little bit gender neutral. So, um, and also I told you there's a concept of syndicate and organized crime. Fantastic amendment been made. Because today, uh, with the world of white collar crime, and this white collar crime, the syndicate, the organized crime, and all these are playing very important role. The organized crime for petty offenses, the organized crime for serious offenses are being included into uh, this proposed Naya Sangeeta under section 111 and 112. Please read this. This is an uh, interesting uh, development, I think, in light of the present day development. And uh, already I mentioned about the, uh, that is in case of, uh, I'll come to this. Now, starting from these uh, uh, various uh, headings under various headings under this Indian proposed Indian penal code. If we ca can come to this, we have a uh, just a simple table. I can just mention you uh, in BNS. We have uh, I already discussed about twenty chapters, and the chapter number one that's a preliminary, uh, the preliminary, and uh, within this we have section one to three. We then have punishment provision that is from 4 to 13. We have general exception uh, to the punishment and all these for 14 to 44. And uh, then we have abatement uh, from 45. Then now the actual offenses, the segregation of offenses start. And you see, similar type of offenses has been given in similar chapters and all this. Then come the ab abatement under uh, 45 to uh, 62. Then come the offenses against women and children. That is from 63 to 99. Offenses uh, uh, against the human body. Uh, culpable homicide has been defined under section 100. It was previously 299. Now it is 100. And uh, offenses uh, against human body, say murder, attempt of murder, uh, uh, abatement to suicide, and all these are included within uh, 100 to 146. Then come offenses against state, 147 to 158. Then offense relating to army and other, 158 to 168. Offense relating to elections and other, then 169 to 177. Offense against again, coin, currency note, and etc. Uh, things coming 178 to 188. Then comes uh, offense against the public tranquility, 189 to 197. Offense or uh, relating to the public servant against, or, uh, that is 198 to 205. Contempt of lawful uh, authority of public servant, 206 to 226. Then we come to the uh, false evidence of, 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 of offense against the public uh, uh, justice, 227 to 269. Public nuisance, 270 to 297. And it's equivalent that provisions we're going to get in BNSS 152 to 162. Offense against religion, 298 to 302. Offense against property, 303 to uh, 334. Offense relating to a document and property marks 335 to 350. Criminal intimidations, ins, uh, insult, annoyance, defamation 351 to 357. And report and and uh, and, uh, and saving, repeal and saving 358. Uh, definitely it will be repealed when the, when the gadget notification will be made. So if we come to the uh, some of the important provisions under the uh, Bharatiya Naya Sangeeta, That is our uh, proposed things. I just want to make a very interesting uh, instances or things to you. My uh, my career for the last twelve years, I'm as a public prosecutor. I've been repeatedly been asked uh, to give advice on a very single most important issue that against a political leader, against a uh, public servant, uh, um, uh, the defamatory post been made. And I see uh, uh, the top of the administrations have been always subjected to these type of things. It happened a lot of time. So it becomes very helpless 
in, in those cases. Now, there are very important um, proposal if this law came in, comes into being. So come to those proposal. I'll come to, I already told you that uh, that is starting from uh, our, uh, this, uh, this uh, C51 to C57. This is always a huge pressure point you for all officers how to tackle these issues. So uh, defamatory defamation because today's defamation is something else. So this the concept of defamation has been somehow uh, elaborated to include all these missions. And uh, if we come to Though it has been made, uh, and so this from this part as well. It will be easier for you to see. It comes to this last part. T56, we have. So defamation against the uh, against the president or the vice president or the governor or the state or uh, or administrator of an union territory or a minister in respect of his conduct in the discharge of his public duty, his public functions, when a, in his, when instituted upon a complaint made by a public prosecutor. So what is happening? If say our minister has been defamed in Facebook and other or, or any other places, present law says that the same minister has to file a complaint because the person who defamed has to be a complainant. Now there is a laxity, there's a relaxation into it. A public prosecutor can initiate a case. So if a defamation against the president or the vice president or the governor or the, or of a state or administration or a minister or anybody in respect of his conduct in the discharge of his public person when instituted upon a complaint made by the public prosecutor. So though this is non-cognizable, but it is been tried by court of session. So it is there. Then uh, we have this printing part that I'm telling about Facebook and other things, the publications and other things. In case of printing or engraving matter, knowing it to be defamatory against the president, or the vice president, or the governor, or of a state or minister, or union territory, or a minister in respect of his conduct in his discharge of his public functions when instituted upon a complaint made by the public prosecutor. In this case also, it is session travel. For individual, it's a magistrate travel. But in case of this, though it's a non uh, uh we have to start in, uh, if I had after taking the permission from the court, but this is uh, travel by session court. So these are some of the uh, important things uh, you can read. Now come to the part of the Bharatiya uh, Sakho Sanghita, that is Indian Evidence Act. So in Indian Evidence Act, we have uh, <coughs> 12 chapter. So, uh, so this is our new evidence so it has a 12 chapter 170 section and four parts very simply speaking it is an act 47 of 2023 you can call this act 47 of 2023 it has four parts. Part one, that is chapter one. It only contains one single chapter. It has two sections, two provisions, sections, section one to section two. Then comes part two. Part two has single chapter two, and it covers section three to section 50. Then comes part three. It covers chapter three 
that is 51 to 53 then chapter 4 that is 54 to 55 chapter 5 56 to 93 chapter 6 uh, 94 to 103 and part 4 it contains chapter uh, 7 8 9 10 11 12 and in chapter 7 104 to 120 uh, provisions are there in chapter 8 we have 121 to 123 in chapter 9 we have 124 to uh, 124 uh, to, uh, to 139 in chapter 10 140 to 168 in chapter 11 we have 169 in chapter 12 we have 170 so these uh, indian evidence act if you take the important part of it and i'm going to just discuss you about uh, uh, with a um, powerpoint presentation most of the amendments uh, are actually connected to the digital evidence so <laughs> it made the entire thing as virtual as possible and it includes lot of things and uh, i'll take a few minutes of yours to discuss about this powerpoint and if you see this the bharatiya sakho adhinayam that indian evidence act has amended the provision of what is document it means any matter expressed or described or otherwise recorded upon any substance see already our document concept includes the electronic record and document what is new in, in into it the illustration 6 it says an electronic record or email server logs documents or computers laptop or smartphones messages website locational evidence and voicemail messages stored on a digital devices are all documents so it expands the all technical paraphernalia ip data, data to voicemail everything so these illustrations uh, six important in defining the extensive part of what is called the document so in case of investigation or anything uh, of that or trial or inquiry in, in, in uh, tribunal or everywhere we have this uh, new uh, scope of the area of what is document then come what is evidence so evidence includes all statement so it can be ocular somebody is coming to the dock and deposing the interesting point is that previously it was an ocular or direct evidence and the documentary evidence and documentary evidence includes the electronic record and document we have this now presently but the proposed thing is it, it is, is much uh, better and, 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 and uh, advanced it says it's not only document somebody is coming to and depose deposit the dog he can even depose by you have an electronic document and that's why the evidence of uh, taking evidence of important witnesses police officers where time is very precious they are coming to the court and kept waiting for days long for a, only one single uh, uh, deposition for a particular case he, he could have done other jobs on that very day. This is to facilitate this, pro, uh, to, to minimize this problem, we can he take help of this thing. What is that? All statements, including statements given electronically, which the court permits are required to be made before it by witnesses in relation to matters of facts under inquiry, and such statements are called oral evidence. All documents, electronic uh, or digital. So, oral documents now can be taken electronically so we now have the loss this proposed law when it co comes into effect it will definitely uh, make a uh, uh, inroads of evidence on vc video conferencing so uh, already we are having rules on that uh, we are we are, we are forwarding it to, because there are a lot of trouble and hurdle because of lack of uh, internet connections how the things will be uh, exhibited how this can be how the, uh, the screen will be shared how the actual document the deposition been sent to him then get it signed by and returned to the court these are all things are there there are problem of logistic and other things and this we have to make because after pandemic period we, we have came to know that contactless world is our destiny so in this case virtual world is our destiny so in that case even a direct ocular witness be 
through electronic mode. And in case of a document, it is always uh, uh, the digital records and electronic records are already true. So admission, admission can be through e-form. An admission is a statement, oral or documentary, or content in electronic form, which suggests any inference as to any fact. So it can be, uh, admission can be an electronic form. Give a simple example. The law has not already uh, has come, but I already got an example of the same. In one of the case, I'm uh, conducting a prosecution in Tufan Ganj. After committing the murder, the uh, husband sent a WhatsApp uh, chat communication to his uh, only son, uh, elder son that <coughs> uh, being frustrated and fed up with the relationship, I have killed your mother. And um, um, this, uh, this is the content of his chat. And the investigating agency has come with this as an extrajudicial confession or the admission of the offense. Now, it is an electronic format. So it can be extrajudicial, it can be judicial, it can be admission in any part. It may it may be there within the content of it, electronic chat or electronic document. Then entries in the books of accounts, public or official book, etc. In <coughs> books, it can be in the e form because we are now digitizing and upgrading the PDF and other thing into the internet. So to form an opinion, e form, when a court has to form an opinion. So we now are going, getting towards present 45 to 45A to 47. Now we already have. This Information Technology Act, Section 79A, uh, examiners of electronic record can give an opinion as to the electronic record of a device, and that can go as a relevant evidence under 45A of the existing law. Just keep this in your mind, and then read this uh, proposed law. It says, Section 31, when a court has to form an opinion as to the existence of any fact of a public nature, any statement of it made in a re recital contained in any central act or state act, or in a central government or state government notification appearing in the respective official gadget, or in a printed paper, or in electronic or digital form, purporting to be such gadget in an relevant bag. So e-gadget, the content of the e-gadget can be easily downloaded and prepared, placed before the court to take care of this relevant evidence. Then 32, when the court has to form an opinion as to the law of any country, then also the digital or electronic form of that law can be placed before the court, and the court has to ac accept the same. Then Come section 33, that is evidence given to statement part or a longer statement. We have a huge statement, but taking part of the statement. It can be part of the electronic statement. Then examiners of electronic evidence you already had. When the court has to form an opinion upon a point of foreign law, science, art, or anything, then uh, uh, question as to the handwriting or finger impressions are relevant facts, and such persons are called experts. Illustration 2, agar aap dekhenge, to milenge. Where Minigal, when in a proceeding, in a proceedings, the court has to form an opinion on any matter relating to any information transmitted or stored in any computer uh, resource or any other electronic or digital form. The opinion of examiners of electronic evidence. Presently, presently, the director and the authorized officer of Central Forensic Laboratory and other forensic laboratory can be termed after gadget notification, obviously, as a person coming under section 39 of the proposed law and 45A of the existing law. So certifying authority's opinion, why required? It is it is uh, very much important because in the days to come, we don't have this manual signature, we have a digital signature, electronic signature. So if we want to know, have some opinion, whether these the, that same person was put has put the signature, whether this original is genuine or whatever things, when the court has to form an opinion as to the person by whom any document was written or signed, the opinion of any person acquainted with the handwriting of the person. Now come to two. When the court has to form an opinion as to the electronic signature of any person, then in see for example, I know how my father used to sign. I can be called to identify. It was in previous in present for, section 47. Now it is section 41, the proposed law. But in case of digital signature, I cannot uh, uh, give an opinion about the digital signature of Mr. X. It is only the certifying authority who can give an opinion. And that is when a court has to form an opinion as to the electronic signature of any person, the opinion of certifying authority, which has issued the electronic signature certificate, is a relevant fact. So these are uh, it now comes to very important three, four, section under Indian Evidence Act, which will going to revolutionize. 
entire system of our investigation, trial, inquiry, and anything and everything. Just let me read out those provisions. Number one, 57. Primary evidence. What is primary evidence? Primary evidence means the document itself produced for the inspection of the court. Now, we already have Arjun Pandit Rao judgment, which says if an electronic record, first time captured in a device, can be given a status of a primary. Fantastic. Then just read this uh, explanation four and thereafter. Explanation four says where an electronic or digital record is created or stored, and such storage occurs simultaneously or sequentially in multiple files, each such file is primary evidence. You know, there is a dichotomy or a paradox you can call uh, the nature of the technology is this. When you process the data in a RAM, it never stores anything. It allocates a space in the non-volatile memory and, and make a replica or image of the same, and you call it a saving of a file under some name and other thing. So in this file structure things, we need to take care of the, 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 the logistic, the movement of the originated files through different medias. So how are we going to take this? What is the status of those documents? Fantastically explained in explanation four, five, six, and seven. I will request you be prepared at least with these provisions. This is going to make revolution. Why I'm telling is because we had a lot of, we already have a lot of difficulties in dealing with the electronic evidence because there are questions. Uh, I'm not telling us Indian law. It was the existing worldwide concept that electronic document is always susceptible to change and uh, it can be changed at any point of time. And again, also, uh, the documents that are coming is always in a secondary format, it's a replica, it's a stored device, it's an image. All these concepts technologically, if you take uh, uh, perfectly uh, coined words, are always there in this field. So how to tackle all these things? And that is why explanation 4, 5, 6, and 7 will take a very important role to play. And section 57 to section 63 is very important in the days to come. Now explanation 4, where an electronic or digital record is created or stored, and such storage occurs, simultaneously or sequentially in multiple files. You are storing those data in a hard disk in multiple files. Then each such file will be primary evidence. Expression five, where an electronic or digital record is produced from proper custody, such electronic and digital record is primary evidence unless it is disputed. Now, what is proper custody? You will, I'll come this point later on. We just wait. Where a video recording is simultaneously stored in electronic form and transmitted, where a video recording is simultaneously stored in electronic form and transmitted or broadcast or transferred to another, each of the stored recordings is a primary evidence. So DVR is a DVR content is a primary evidence. Where an electronic or digital record is stored in multiple storage spaces. In a computer resource, so I can store the data in my hard disk, file in hard disk, in my pen drive, and, and other places. So each uh, multiple st storage spaces in a computer resource, each such automated storage, definitely automated storage, including temporary files, is primary evidence. Now, the admissibility of electronic record, undeniable. If we take the wording of section 61. It says nothing in this odinium that is in code. Previously code, now odinium. So nothing in this odinium shall apply to deny the admissibility of an electronic or digital record in the evidence on the ground that it is an electronic or digital record. And such record shall subject to section 63 have the same legal effect, validity, enforceability as other documents. So you can take this thing this way that this section will revolutionize the application of electronic evidence. No court said that they will not going to rely on it. Every electronic or digital evidence, because see, previously there are hundreds of judgments in USA, UK, other developed countries, even including South Africa, uh, Brazil, Canada, and others, that they are telling that electronic evidence may be susceptible to change, and we should not rely on it. 
Now things are shifting towards reliability, posing more reliability on the electronic evidence, but because people have no other option open. India is the world's second largest internet user. We're heading for a number one spot. Now people are, whatever they're doing, their every footprint is in the digital platform. So we have to take evidence from the digital platform. We can't have any allergy or apathy towards this. We can't, we can afford to do it. So if that being so, then law has to be the, that way, updated or upgraded or advanced. And this is that law. It says no provision in this Odinium shall apply to or help to deny the admissibility of electronic or digital record in the evidence on the ground that it is it is an electronic record or electronic thing. And such records shall subject to 63. 63 subject to why? Because 63 is equivalent to present day 65B. So if we comply 65B, electronic evidence will be made admissible. Same way, if we comply the 63, then 61 is a straight jacket rule. Nobody can deny. So if we want to add, take an electronic evidence, rely on it, or digital evidence and rely on it, the only thing that we have to comply is the, uh, the procedure laid down under section 63. That is present day 65B. Now, the content of electronic record may be proved in accordance with now come to 62. 62 is equivalent to 65A. It says the content of an electronic record may be proved in, in accordance with the provision of 60. Just the copy paste. Now, no change. 65A equals to 62. And 65B equals to 63. And 63 subsection 1, like the present day 65B subsection 1, is a fantastic uh, provisions given to made us able to come with the copy of the evidence to a media or a printout or documented form. If we have not been there, we would have been absolutely helpless to admit or exhibit any kind of electronic evidence, which is the most important evidence. If you go and uh, at least study my own cases, what I've done for the last 10, 15, years, uh, 12 years as a prosecutor, uh, in every nature of crime, I have tried to include electronic evidence in it. Because people, the judges, their mindset is all more prone on the scientific evidence. They rely on the survey. In my most of the trial, you know, I have, I'm starting my, I'm opening my prosecution case with the scientific expert. That is the forensic expert, doctor and other things, the um, uh, footprints, the uh, the gate patterns, the cycle patterns, the bike pattern, whatever be the way the evidence is coming up. I'm starting with those people because the ju judge's mindset is more they're relying on the scientific evidence. And that is why if we want to have a successful prosecution, because you know, because, uh, the, uh, because of the successful prosecution in a heinous crime, the law and order will be maintained. It's all directly connected with each other. So for every heinous cases, there's a question of accountability of all of the officers present today. And when there is a question of accountability, people are depending on I on you, what you are doing. In that perspective, we always have a strategy, a policy, a planning before we start doing a vital or crucial case, which is heinous or very important and highly reported in the society, in your districts and others. So in those cases, we have to accept manifold electronic document, and this way we can go to the uh, rigors of 65B, and uh, uh, it can be in a standalone mode, it can be in a computer system, or can, you know, evidence can be in three format. Either I say, for example, I'm sending a mail to you. So it's a networking, it's, a, it's going through the tunnel, networking tunnel or protocols by way of uh, maintaining the networking protocol. So on a computer network, it can be a downloaded computer system, cellular system, or it can be a computer system or, uh, as a running condition. So standalone mode on a computer system, on a computer network, on a computer resource, enabling information, creating or providing information, processing and storage. They're on the way of processing and storage by using different automated softwares and other things. So this way that uh, electronic evidence can be different perspective. And we have, as you know, already have. But the interesting point about this, now coming to section 66, except 
in the case of a secured electronic signature, if the electronic signature of any subscriber is alleged to have been affixed to an electronic record, the fact that such electronic signature is the electronic signature of the subscriber must be proved. We have to prove this. And for proving this, the opinion of the report of the signature certifying authority is a very, uh, it will play a very important crucial role. Then genuineness of every electronic or digital record, section 81. The court shall presume the genuineness of every electronic or digital record purporting to be the official gadget, purporting to be the electronic or digital record directed by any law to be kept by any person. If such electronic or digital record is kept substantially in the form required by law uh, uh, in, in, uh, and is produced from the proponent. I have taken the data because when we are collecting the evidence, the three point important thing is that, the important thing is that one is a collection, second is preservation, and third is a presentation before the court of law or the forum. And in this process, the forensic expert is also playing an important role, helping us. Now, in doing so, you see that genuineness of every electronic record, uh, that there is a presumption. If it is coming from the proper custody, means the person who is a custodian of the device which contains the evidence, So uh, some of the few sections are just to, uh, we are just uh, make a mention of the same, and I'll come to a, any questions you if you have. So the court can presume that every electronic record, uh, whenever is put into uh, make a valid agreement, then uh, how the electronic record and secure electronic records will be imposed in any pro proceedings involving a secure electronic record. The court shall presume, unless contrary is proved, that the secure electronic record has not been altered since the specific point of time to which the secure status relates. So there is a presumption of fact in this case. In any proceeding involving secure electronic signature, the court shall presume, unless the contrary is proved, that the secure, how this is related to the reliability of a data which can be called a secure electronic uh, uh, put uh, on it a secure electronic signature. And say, for example, uh, uh, when a document has been proved by a signature, the same way an electronic record can be proved by an electronic signature of the originator. So the secure electronic signature is affixed by a subscriber with the intention of signing or approving the electronic record. And except in the case of a secure electronic record or secure electronic signature, nothing in this, this section shall create any presumption relating to the authenticity and integrity of the electronic record or any electronic signature. So we have 50-50 balance been made. It's not that we're going to make this sacrosanct, but secure electronic signature is affixed by subscriber with the intention of signing or approving the electronic signature. And this section, section 86, has to be read with section uh, 3A of 3 capital A of Information Technology Act. When we uh, have the authenticity, uh, question of authenticity of a digital signature. Then comes to 87. The court shall presume, unless contrary is proved, that the information listed in electronic signature certificate is correct, except for information specified of subscriber information, which has not been verified, if the certificate was accepted by the subscriber. So uh, if I uh, accept it, there is a very little scope for my, me to recoil and, 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 uh, and, and say uh, that uh, it is not my signature. Section 90, so a presumption in favor of electronic message. The court may presume that an electronic message forwarded by an originator to an electronic mail server to the address to whom the message purports to have been sent. This is equivalent to present day section 88A. 88A has been in a form of section 90. It says we can presume, we may presume that this message has sent from this mail ID or this terminal of this origin, from this origin, from this recipient, but the court shall not make any presumption as to the person by whom such message was sent. Say, for example, I uh, there is an allegation that I have sent some uh, obscene materials to some uh, person, and the person files a case. Investigating agency comes to my house and take the evidence, a screenshot, a printout, and, and then and the attachment and all this. How far or how much presumption the court make from this evidence? Court makes from this evidence simple. The court may presume that this uh, communication purported to have been sent from vivas.chatterjee.gmail.com to the mail id of that person but court shall not presume that vivas Chatterjee has sent this mail so that's the interesting uh, inter uh, concept of law in india 
because we differentiate between a man and machine. But in electronic record, parting or proved to be five years old. Uh, in case of non-electronic record, it's a three, 30 years old presumption. But in case of electronic record, you know, we have a concept called digital dark age. The data which you can read today, you may not read the same after 20, 25 years. And that's why the concept of PDF slash A, that's when archived has come. 2000 years old manuscript can be read or decoded, but uh, uh, evidence in a floppy disk may not be done today in a court when the evidence is to be placed. So that's the irony of this uh, ultra modern world where the concept of digital dark age has come. And that's why the presumption is 30 years for non-digital documents. Here is only five years. Is produced from any custody with the court <coughs> in the particular case is considered proper. The court may presume that the electronic signature, which purpose to be the electronic signature of any particular person, was so affixed by him only or any person whom he has authorized to sign on his behalf. <coughs> so, if a document is five years, a, a, a electronic doc, uh, record is there and it's a five years old, then the court may presume that this, uh, the signature has been imposed by me or by any person whom I have authorized. So production of electronic records, no one shall be compelled to produce documents, the same thing, uh, unless and until the loss is so. So new, uh, uh, th that is a wholesome amendment in, in, in Indian uh, Evidence Act. And some of them th things in case of virtual uh, e courts and other, I already discussed all this point in case of our Shurokha uh, Sangita. We have audio, video, electronic most definition. I already discussed about it. We have uh, TIP by mentally or physically disabled person by audio, video, electronic means. We have someone served to be uh, to be served by electronic communications. Different platform can be used for that purpose. And uh, and uh, these are there. And uh, due service of someone through electronic communications. What with the proper service, we can send it to different platforms and other, and then that can be taken as a due service. And this can be read with section 13, uh, 11, 12, and 13 of Information Technology Act. Due service then comes to the production of any document, electronic communication, including communications devices, how a document can be produced. Search and seizure by mobile phone. So I already come to this point, the process of conducting search of, of a place or taking possession of property article, uh, or a thing under this chapter or under section 100, including the preparation of the list of all things seized, occurred in such seizure and signing of the list, shall be recorded through any audio, video, electronic means, preferably mobile phone, and the police officer shall, without delay, forward such recording to the district magistrate, subdivisional magistrate, or judicial magistrate of the first class. So, you have to send a copy of that recording uh, to the, along with the evidences to the learned court. So, uh, and the competent authorities. Filing FIR through electronic communications. We have already have 173. I already told you about three days uh, time gap, and then coming person giving a making a signature on it. So uh, by electronic communication, it shall be taken on record by him on being signed within three days by the person giving it. Procedure for investigation. I already explained about the presence of forensic expert. So these are all uh, examination of witness by police. Uh, that is, uh, you know, 160 uh, CRPC now is 180. And the police officer may uh, reduce into writing any statement made to him in the course of an examination under this means 161 in the days to come. I've seen this all this because the victims sitting in beyond India, how their statements can be recorded. So in, in one of the CID case, the call center case 2016, we had a record of making uh, a 161 statement through audio video mode uh, of, of an German uh, citizen. So, uh, and also already in the operation, there's a law now comes in that uh, make a separate record of statement of each of such person, provided that statement made under this subsection may also be recorded by audio, video, electronic means. So that means the presence of that person is not always mandatory you record when you're recording a statement. Recording of confession and statement by electronic mode. So even confession uh, uh, can be made on electronic mode. Audio, video mode, the search can be done by officer in charge of police stations or a, Officer make an investigation has reasonable ground for believing that anything necessary. So, police officer proceeding under this section shall uh, accuse can be produced by audio video mode. I already discussed sequence of custody supply of river. Already discussed about this cheating or deception by e messages. Uh, sorry, uh, no, this, these are the there offenses outside India. 
cognizance of police report submitted in evidence i already uh, discussed it summons and warrant by emote supply of documents i already told you that there's a lot of issues coming under supplying copy you can send it through emote evidence of witnesses by electronic means you can do it uh, the court can do it discharge hearing on electronic means so discharge hearing can be done on this way examination of witness by electronic mode defense witness might be maybe by e means there will be times when the no lawyer would be present in court because everybody will be doing it from their own chambers and even the police officers and other people will be sitting their offices and they will be uh, 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 deposing on behalf of uh, or, or playing their part so presence of an accused in trial by uh, e mode examinations of the accused in custody by electronic communications that means c13 can be done by uh, present day c13 that is c16 can be done by uh, electronic mode Appear, uh, appearance of expert in electronic means so expert can come on uh, vc or other electronic mode it's not always that uh, they should come on the court and, uh, and, and make an wastage of their entire uh, level time. Evidence in case of proclaimed offender, uh, where a trial is related to a person under this section, the reposition and examination of witness may, as far as practical, be recorded by audio, video, electronic means, preferably mobile phone, and such recordings shall be kept in such manner as the court may direct. So uh, this is there. Judgment pronunciation be, uh, be made on electronic mode. Taking photograph or videograph of case property, it can be uh, made. I already discussed about this 530. It makes everything uh, E-World compliant. Then in case of uh, uh, the forthcoming Indian Penal Code, that is Naya Sanghita, we have section 1, subsection 5. The provision of the Sanghita shall also apply to any offenses in, in India, beyond the India, and beyond India committing offenses targeting in computer resources located in India. So if case of, say, for example, in our digital world when the crime has been there is a multiple uh, cause of action and people are sitting in any part of the world committing crime through computer and other computer resources in those cases uh, uh, that provision of sanghita should apply it's not that the revise is uh, situated in any other place so documents means any matter expressed or described upon substance by means of letters figures and include electronic digital record uh, for this purpose in case of under Indian Penal Code Section 7, propose uh, Naya Sanghita 78 equivalent to our stalking, 354D equivalent 78, uh, follows a man, woman and contacts and attempts to uh, contact such women to foster personal interactions repeatedly despite the clear interactions and monitor the use of a uh, woman. Uh, and in, usually today, in today's world, this stalking has been done through the electronic platforms or other things. Offense against nation by e communications, it can be done by Facebook or any other mode platform by which these things can be spread. Then promoting enmity, it can be through a, a, a e mode. Uh, imputations uh, prejudicial to the national integrations by it can be the offense can be committed through e mode. Public servant framing and incorrect documents, the documents may be in e mode. Omission to produce electronic record, it can this can also the omissions of uh, it can be through electronic record, whoever being legally bound to produce and where a document or electronic record is to be produced. In that case, also he is omitting to produce even an electronic record, making false uh, <coughs> electronic record or e document. Distribution of e record to prevent productions as evidence. Sale, etc., of the obscene books, etc., in case of these 294, uh, ha we have this, and it can be through uh, online obscene things. Then acts outraging the release of areas. So uh, section 299 is there whenever we deliver uh, acts outraging the religious feelings, it can be through emote. Extortion can be made by emote. Uh, it, uh, an illustration is interesting, illustration as I have given, uh, which is mentioned in our uh, proposed law. It threatens jet by sending a message through an electronic device that your child is in my possessions and will be put to death unless you send me one lakh rupees. A thus induces jet to give him money. A has committed extortion. So you can understand, give an example of extortion by e mode. Making a false document by e mode. So this, this is their uh, electronic forgery. Uh, today's documents are more or less electronic documents. So forgery has to be electronic. Forgery of uh, record of uh, court, etc., by e mode. 
possession of forged e documents forged e documents using as genuine <coughs> counterfeiting for authentication of e recording e records falsification of uh, uh, accounts in e form statement conducting to public mischief by e forms and all these are there uh, 